Chapter 1 Hold on, Author's Note, Please read the, Please read before you start the first chapter, Auxiliary chapter before reading it. Thank you tilde tilde, dot dot dot, honk, honk, tires screeching, bam, the driver tried to apply brakes, but it was already too late. He never expected a random man to appear in front of his truck on a clear road. Ugh, truck coon, though I did request you to hit me in a few of my comments, I just did that because I thought it would make me look funny and cool, you weren't supposed to take it seriously. Fuck, it hurts. Nux, the 35-year-old man who was hit by the truck felt his whole body searing in pain, it did not take much of a time for his body to fall limply on the ground, his eyes turned heavy, he did try to keep them open but couldn't bear it anymore, and soon, his consciousness faded away. Ellipsis. Wah, Nux's whole body flinched as he woke up. That was a scary dream, he sighed, his forehead still sweating but suddenly, he furrowed his brows. Ro. Where is this place? He looked around and found himself in an unknown room. Unlike the normal rooms made from cement and bricks, this room was built from wood, though it was clean, it was clear from the furniture that the living condition of the person living in this room wasn't very good. Of course, Nux didn't have the time to think about all this since he was already panicking due to the weird circumstances. Was I kidnapped? No, it doesn't make sense, there is no way someone would kidnap me since I don't have any value at all. There is no merit, wait, does that mean it wasn't a dream and I was really hit by that truck? He thought about several things that can lead him to his current situation. He raised his hand to touch his forehead and could feel an unusual bump on his head. Was I saved by someone? Hum, that must be it. Damn, now I would have to pay for hospital bills, ha, huh, if I knew this would happen, I would have bought health insurance. Nux cried inwardly, already thinking about different ways to pay the bill and was ready to say goodbye to all his games and novel for the next few years since he would have to work overtime. However, he suddenly felt something was different. Due to all that confusion, he might not have noticed this earlier, but now that he is thinking clearly, his hands were whiter and thinner than before. He looked down and noticed that he was wearing completely different clothes from what he is normally used to. He touched his face and noticed his beard was completely gone and even his face felt different than before. Hold on. Chapter 2 An Instant Decision He touched his face and noticed his beard was completely gone and even his face felt different than before. Hold on. Suddenly, a whole new theory appeared in his mind and a strange excitement welled within him. Hee hee, is this what I think it is? Ignoring the pain he felt, he quickly ran towards the door and as soon as he opened it, he took a deep breath, his eyes shining brightly and a big smile appeared on his face. Yup, it's definitely what I think it is. He exclaimed, the air is different, the scenery is different, there is no doubt about it. He was in another world. Ha ha ha, I transmigrated, truck coon, my friend. I was definitely serious when I said I wanted you to hit me. Ha ha ha, he laughed loudly and after taking another deep breath, he returned to his room and sat on the ground with an excited look on his face. According to the script, now is the time for my chi to make an entry right. His eyes shined in excitement as he waited for his chi to appear. Ellipsis. Five minutes passed. Dot dot dot. Ten minutes passed. Dot dot dot. Thirty minutes passed. His excitement dimmed down. His chi did not appear. Okay, it's alright. Some cheats like to play with Mick's feelings and only appear when Mick is in danger. Yes it must be like that. Thinking that, he looked around and his eyes fell on a slightly sharper rock lying on the floor. Ro. Without hesitation, he picked the rock up and stabbed it right through his abdomen. Or not. Nope. No 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 nope. Not doing that. I can't hurt myself based on a fantasy story now, can I? That makes no sense. Not that I am scared or anything. This is just not practical. Ha ha. He chickened out and decided to wait a little longer. Ellipsis. Time passed. Nothing happened. Finally, Nux gave up on receiving his cheat. As expected, ain't no way will Lady Luck ever be beside me. Dot dot dot, Truck Coon, you weren't supposed to take my comments seriously. He sighed as he accepted his fate and decided to find a way to live yet another normal life. His eyes then fell on a small mirror in the corner of the room, he walked towards it and as soon as he looked at his reflection, he cussed. Fuck, I am handsome, he instantly threw away the thoughts he had about living a normal life. Alright, I'ma become a gigolo and find a sugar mama to take care of me. Yay, an instant decision. Chapter 3 Of course, I am handsome indeed. Nux spoke in delight as he glanced at his face from different angles, the more he watched the more he liked it. His long thick raven hair, combined with his smooth white skin with a perfectly carved face. His golden eyes had a unique shine within them. His sword-like eyebrows, thin nose and sharp jawline made his face immortal like even though it was a little bruised. With this face, combined with this frail looking body, I am indeed the best quality gigolo anyone can ever have. I have to work hard to find a customer worthy of me. Nux nodded to himself but then furrowed his brows. But why am I bruised? He thought, after his transmigration, nothing was going according to the script, he didn't get his cheat, and neither did he have his predecessor's memory. 
Were they jealous of my overly handsome face? Hum, that should be the case, HMPH. Losers, wait till I find a good sugar mommy, I'll have my revenge then. HMPH, HMPH, Nuts snorted inwardly as he hypothesized. Growl, just as he was thinking about his revenge, he heard his stomach growling, only then did he realize that he was very hungry. He looked around and found some peach-like fruits on his table. It should not be poisonous since it is in my house, Ro. Thinking that, he quickly took a bite. They tasted like green apples, finding them delicious, he devoured them all without wasting any time. Though that little amount of fruits could not satisfy his hunger completely, it was not as bad as before. However, if he learned that what he just ate was equal to two days meal of his predecessor, he would not complain about not being satisfied at all. Knock knock, smash. Suddenly, he heard a knock on the door but just as he was about to answer, the door was slammed open and three rough looking guys came in. Why did you even bother knocking if you wanted to slam open the door? Nux thought inwardly but he knew it was not the time to ask questions like these. Have you decided to come with us? The scar-faced man, who Nux presumed was the leader of this group asked. Quote ellipsis quote, Nux took a deep breath as he glared at them without saying anything, however, there was no trace of fear on his face. The leader frowned as he glanced at his subordinates, only when he confirmed that they had the same confused look on their face did he turn to Nux and raised his eyebrow. I asked, have you decided to come with us? He asked again, this time, his tone a little heavier than before. Of course. Chapter 4 Fuck yes. I asked, have you decided to come with us? He asked again, this time, his tone a little heavier than before. Of course. Nux quickly answered without even knowing where they would take him. His logic was simple, he knew he stood no chance against them if they fought, so if they wanted to harm him, they could have done it here. They would not bother taking him somewhere where they have set up a trap just to deal with a weakling like him. MMMHMM. He agreed after thinking it logically, not because he was scared of the scar-faced man in front of him. Not at all. The leader, the scar-faced man was shocked by his answer but his face quickly returned to normal as he nodded and threw a glass bottle containing a weird purple-colored liquid in it. Drink it. Without asking anything, Nux quickly emptied the bottle, although it was a little bitter. As soon as it traveled down his throat, he felt warm energy coursing throughout his body and his face, which was bruised, was healed without any mark left. Though surprised, he didn't have the luxury to think what kind of godly thing he had just drunk as he quickly followed the men. Ellipsis. After walking for a while, he appeared in front of a building, which was completely in contrast with his worn-out wooden house. It was a large building made from white-colored marbles which gave the building a holy feeling. There were a few words written on it, but Nux couldn't recognize the language so he ignored them. Soon, the party entered the building and walked towards a specific room, although he could not read what was written on the door, by the design and others' attitude, it was clear that the room belonged to someone important. Knock knock. After a knock, the door was opened by a beautiful girl wearing a classic maid costume, she nodded to the scar-faced man before glancing towards Nux, a little surprise could be seen on her face before it went back to her normal, expressionless face, Ro. She walked into the room and the party followed her trail, there they saw a man wearing expensive-looking robes who was sitting on a chair with a leisurely attitude. The man had blonde hair with a French mustache, making him look like a classic merchant. He then glanced at Nux before asking, you know why you were brought here, right? Countless thoughts ran wild inside Nux's mind. Should I tell him I do not know anything? But from that scar-faced man's attitude, it is clear that he had told my predecessor about the situation. Won't they know that I am not who they think I am? But this is my only chance to know what is happening, I should not waste it. Due to all these quick thoughts, Nux panicked a little and nodded and shook his head at the same time, looking quite funny. The man raised his eyebrows at his response as he glanced at the scar-faced man before turning back to Nux. My name is Elton Payton, I am the head of this merchant guild. You, my friend, are a lucky man who caught the eyes of Viscount Felberta. Nux's eyes opened wide as he looked at Elton to see if he was joking. Yes, my friend, Viscount Felberta wishes to take you as her personnel boy toy, Elton revealed and Nux's eyes couldn't hide the shock he was experiencing. Fuck yes. Chapter 5 Finally, finally, I got my cheat. Seeing Nux's shocked look, Elton nodded in satisfaction and questioned. Well, are you ready to meet Viscount Felberta? Of course, but shouldn't I first prepare myself and buy some suitable clothes to look my best possible? Nux questioned, already thinking about ways to get on Viscount Felberta's good side. He was a good gigolo. As good as a natural. Hearing what Nux said, Elton glanced at Nux's stunning face and his lips twitched. Still, as a professional merchant, he hid his expression and replied, No, I don't think you should do that. A woman like Viscount Felberta has a thing for weak boys, you know what I mean. Your frail-looking body combined with those worn-out loose robes will make her more excited. I see, Nux nodded solemnly. His expression looked like he was contemplating something serious. Alright, let's not make Viscount wait for longer than we already have, 
Elton said as he clapped his hand and rushed everyone to get ready. Ellipsis. An hour-long carriage ride later, Nux found himself in front of a woman. As the lady's gaze fell on Nux, her eyes brightened and a big smile appeared on her face. Hello, Nux, my name is Felber de Alve, I was the one who bought you from the Merchant Guild. From now on, you will stay here with me and will do whatever I say, all right. Whatever tilde I say, okay. Nux on the other hand stood still as he gazed ahead with a dumbstruck look on his face. Noticing his intense and kind of lost gaze, Viscount blushed a little before she asked, Do you have any questions? Nux remained silent. Seeing this, everyone in the room furrowed their brows but it didn't matter to Nux at all. He didn't bother about anyone present in the room, not even Viscount Felberta. Right now, he was busy examining the screen that appeared in front of his eyes along with a ding sound inside his head. Ding. First target detected. Initializing Supreme Harem God System. Connecting the Supreme Harem God System to host soul. Connection completed. Character information. Row. Name. Nux Leander. Age. 18. Mana cultivation. Mortal. Body cultivation. Mortal. Closing square bracket. Race. Human. Talent. Low. LVL. 1. HP. 100 one hundredths. STR. 6. AGL. 8. VIT. 10. STM. 7. Int. 9. Def. 5. Blank points. 10. Limit of a normal human. 10. Ability. Craving touch. Craving touch. Your touch will make a woman crave for more and she will never be sexually satisfied by anyone else. The more time you spend with a woman the stronger the effect gets. Harem members. None. As a starting bonus, the system will provide the host with 10 blank points that he can add to any of his stats. The Supreme Harem God system has been successfully installed. From now on, the host can gain the power, talent, physique, and bloodline of the woman he fucks. The stronger the target, the more benefits the host gains. The more he read, the better it got, an unusual glint shone in his eyes. Finally, finally, I got my cheat. Now I don't have to live a normal life anymore. Chapter 6 Viscount Felberta Finally, finally, I got my cheat. Now I don't have to live a normal life anymore. He rejoiced inwardly. Nux. Suddenly, he heard someone shouting his name and his thoughts quickly returned to earth. Ah, wah what? He asked as his gaze finally fell on Viscount Felberta. What are you thinking that is so important that you had the galls to ignore me? Viscount questioned as she glared at Nux. Ah, you um, s sorry, I I am sorry. I I just never saw someone as beautiful as you s I was lost, he replied awkwardly with a slight blush on his face. Real smooth, his answer worked like a charm as Viscount's gaze changed from glare to a warm gaze. Ha, this game's on easy mode. Nux thought inwardly as he noticed the change in her expression. But he wasn't lying, he was really surprised when he saw her. He thought that she would be like some fat ugly lady, but she, man, she was a classic example of a MILF. Ro, her perfect hourglass figure was as enchanting as it could ever get, Nux couldn't help but glance at those milky breasts that were enough for a normal weave to die from a nosebleed. Her raven hair matched Nux's, while her black eyeballs were as deep as an abyss. Her thin eyebrows, small nose and cherry-like red and luscious lips made her look like an alluring succubus. He even wondered why a woman like her wants a boy toy and why would she even pay for it. Heck, people would pay themselves if they can have a chance to be her boy toy. It's not a problem, just be careful from now on. Okay, I will ask you again, are you ready to abandon your normal life and stay with me for the rest of your life? Of course, though this reply was the same as before, if one looks deeply, there was a different glint in his golden eyes. A look of a predator. Earlier, he just wanted to be a boy toy so that he can live a stable life while he spends some time with someone but now. Now he wasn't here just to be a boy toy or a gigolo, now he wanted to conquer this woman called Felberta. He glanced at his ridiculously overpowered ability, the craving touch and thought of different ways to get more women and increase his power. Truck Coon, my friend. I was definitely serious when I said I wanted you to hit me. Ha ha ha. Chapter 7 Security is important, after all. Ha, Nux sighed in relief as he sat on a soft bed and looked around, right now he was in a new room that was completely different from his previous worn-out room. It was clear that Viscount treated him quite well. Nux shook his head as he glanced at the system screen in front of him. Memory fragment detected, would you like to retrieve it? Cost, 10 blank points. Y, N, this should be my predecessor's memories, should I retrieve it? Um, but is it really worth it? I mean he was just a nobody what could he know that can help me? Sure it would be more convenient but should I spend 10 blank points? That is all the blank points I have right now. Also, I don't know what is the drop rate of these blank points, so I don't know their value. But according to the system, a normal human's limit for a certain attribute is 10, which means if I add all the blank points on strength, it can directly double my strength compared to normal humans. 
That's definitely a huge gain, yup, I can't waste these precious blank points on something I am unsure about. Now technically, I should save these blank points and not add them to any other attributes so I can grind more points while being weak and add these points when I can't gain them anymore. But this only sounds good if it is a video game, and my life is certainly not one. Okay, I have decided, I'll add these points right now and will preserve the points I will gain later. Alright, there is nothing much to think about it, 6 points on agility, 4 on stamina. Nux felt a unique stream of energy flowing through his body, suddenly, he felt that his body was a lot lighter than before, he felt like he could easily overtake the world's faster runner in a race. It felt weird and good at the same time. Name, Nux Leander, age, 18, row, mana cultivation, mortal, body cultivation, mortal, closing square bracket, race, human, talent, low, LVL, 1, HP, 100 one hundredths, STR, 6, AGL, 14, VIT, 10, STM, 11, INT, 9, DEF, 5, blank points, oh, he nodded in satisfaction as he glanced at his stats, with this, I can run away easily if I ever get stuck in a difficult situation, security is important, after all, after settling the matter of his stats, he shifted his attention to his system as he started reading about its features to get a better understanding of it, Chapter 8 A Predator's Grin Time passed and evening fell, Nux noticed that it was time for the Viscount to return from her office. He didn't know the exact time she would return but since he didn't have anything else to do he stood up and walked towards the Viscount's room. He had done some research and learned that the Viscount's husband died and her only son lives in Royal Academy and rarely comes home. Yup, a clear path ahead. Chuckling inwardly, he appeared in front of the Viscount's room, noticing that she hasn't returned, he decided to sit in front of the room and wait for her. Dot dot dot, Nux. What are you doing here? It didn't take a long time for Viscount to return along with two maids. She had a surprised look on her face when she saw Nux sitting in front of her room and she questioned. Oh oh nothing em ma'am. I I just thought that you would be tired after working for so long. So I decided to come here and check if there is anything I can help you with. Nux stuttered as he answered. Of course, he didn't forget to glance at her face before lowering his gaze in shame and a slight blush. Seemingly pleased by his answer, Viscount smiled and questioned. Oh. What would you help me with? I I can M massage your shoulders, it will help you are relax, Nux answered, keeping his gaze down. Viscount chuckled as an intense urge to tease this boy welled inside her. She walked towards Nux with an enchanting smile, her face, half a finger away from Nux's as she questioned. Why are you looking down? Am I too ugly for you to look at? No, you are just too beautiful. Ah, I am mean no, that's not it, no I mean you are beautiful but but um um, Nux panicked when he looked up and noticed that her face was too close to his. He tried to back away but slipped and fell to the ground, unable to come up with an explanation, he decided to keep his gaze on the ground. Ro. Seeing this, not only Viscount, even the two maids following her chuckled, the Viscount smiled as she crouched in front of Nux as she questioned. Are you telling me I am not beautiful? And no, then you think I am beautiful? Yes, Viscount's smile widened as she questioned. Are you hitting on me? And no, I didn't mean it like tea that. I I. Ha ha ha, seeing the flustered look on his face, the Viscount laughed out loud before she flicked her finger on his forehead to gain his attention and replied. Alright, you don't need to be so flustered, I was just teasing you. As for you massaging me, well, what are you waiting for? Follow me. Saying that, the Viscount stood up and she entered her room with a very satisfied look on her face, Nux also followed her back to her room obediently. Of course, nobody noticed that small, imperceptible smile on his face. A Predator's Grin Chapter 9 Mission Viscount Felbert's room was much more elegant and well furnished than Nux's but he didn't bother looking around as his gaze was fixed on that ripe ass that is swaying left and right as she is walking. Combined with the red gown she is wearing that does nothing to hide her hourglass figure, and even enhances it, she looked as if she is teasing her just by being there. A really enchanting woman, ding, suddenly, a sound rang inside Nux's head. Mission, fuck Felberta Alve. Description, well, fuck Felberta Alve. Reward, eye of discerning. Warning. If the mission fails, the ability craving touch will be disabled. Time limit. 30 days. Huh. A mission. Wow. It really is like an RPG game huh. The punishment is quite scary though. As for the reward, I don't know what that is. Eye of discerning. Discerning eye. Eye of discerning. Nux tried to say the ability name in his mind. He even tried touching the screen. Not only that, he even called it out loud even though he was near Viscount Felberta. Single quote dot 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 single quote. But even after all this, nothing happened. Ro, you, mister, system, do I not get any description? Nux tried to call the system but again, nothing happened. The system was ignoring him. Hum, is it one of those systems that do not have consciousness? Well, to be honest, I do prefer it that way. 
I don't really want a talking system, that's too annoying. Oh well, whatever, as far as I know, this mission is very easy. I mean, this woman bought me as a boy toy right? Won't it be stupid not to fuck the boy toy she spent her money on? This mission is a freebie. Hee hee tilde I am looking forwards tot he rewards though. Hum, what are you standing there for? Come on, start with my shoulders. Viscount who was sitting on the huge bed ordered. Nux came out of his reverie and his eyes fell on Viscount Felberta sitting on the huge bed and his heartbeat quickened. The contrast between the Viscount's red gown and white bedsheets was really great, combined with how she was sitting there defenselessly while looking at him with her overly charming face, he couldn't help but gulp and blushed. This time, he wasn't acting, it was his natural reaction. Viscount Felberta was too beautiful. Seeing him blushing like that, a smile appeared on Viscount Felberta's face. Who doesn't want their beauty to be appreciated by others? Of course, as a Viscount and a beautiful one to boot, there are many people who admire her beauty but there was a difference between Nux and them. Others always had some sort of hidden intentions behind their praises. She was a noble, she knows how two-faced other nobles can be, so she never let her guard down in front of them. Nux however, was different, he was just a powerless little boy. He can't do anything to her, therefore, his praises were honest. This added to the fact that he isn't really praising her and is just blushing uncontrollably, Felberta was even surer. As a Viscount and a beautiful one to boot, there are many people who admire her beauty but there was a difference between Nux and them. Others always had some sort of hidden intentions behind their praises. She was a noble, she knows how two-faced other nobles can be, so she never let her guard down in front of them. Nux however, was different, he was just a powerless little boy. He can't do anything to her, therefore, his praises were honest. This added to the fact that he isn't really praising her and is just blushing uncontrollably, Felberta was even surer. Of course, this wasn't the only reason why Nux and the others were different. This boy Nux was really handsome. A little too handsome, just looking at his perfectly carved face combined with that beautiful golden eyes, Felberta felt her heart racing. All of this combined with the frail looking weak body he has. Felberta was really happy with her find. Yup, good looks really helps with many things. Come on, Nux, why are you not coming here? Do you plan to make me wait for so long? And no ma'am, I I am see coming. Nux then walked towards the bed, the closer he walked the more his face blushed, then without waiting, he climbed onto the bed and then moved behind the Viscount. I I will be s starting m ma'am. Yes, do it. Nux's hand then touched Felberta's shoulders. His gaze then turned focused and he started massaging them. His massaging skills, however, were anything but good, the Viscount wanted to say something but when she turned her head a little and noticed his immersed gaze on his stunning face, she ignored the bad massage and just closed her eyes. However, as she remembered the concentrated look and compared it to the flustered look he had a while before, a mischievous smile appeared on her face. She then turned her head and questioned, It must be difficult for you to massage without direct contact with the skin right? Wait, let me remove this gown. She then stood up, deliberately forming an arch between her back and ass to tease Nux before she grabbed her gown and with one move, the whole thing fell on the floor. She stood in the room wearing nothing but a black pair of bra and panty. She quickly glanced at Nux and seeing the flustered look on his red face, her smile widened. M ma'am it was a alri, Nux wanted to persuade her but she cut him between his words and replied. Don't worry, I am not an unreasonable person, I know that massage should be done with direct skin contact. Now don't worry and continue what you were doing. The Viscount sat back on the bed and quickly placed Nux's hands on her shoulders, urging him to continue. Nux, of course, couldn't go against her orders and continued with the massage. This time when Viscount turned her head, she saw the same focused gaze but she didn't miss the tinge of red that he was trying hard to hide. Not only that, even his hands were shaking a little. Ha ha ha, he is so cute and innocent Tilda. Chapter 11 A Warmly Welcomed Error Asterisk Ha ha ha, he is so cute and innocent Tilda. Viscount laughed inwardly as she admired her past self for deciding to buy and have him all to herself. Nux, on the other hand, smiled inwardly when he saw the satisfied look on her face. He then glanced all over her body and he had to admit, she has the best body he has ever seen. Adding it to the fact that she was already in her black undergarments. Nux already had a boner. Alright, let's advance to the second part. With that, Nux shifted his body a little and the tent that was formed on his crotch directly touched Viscount's lower armpit. Hum, startled, Viscount quickly glanced at the thing poking her and was shocked to find what it was. She then glanced at Nux and seeing his same focused and flustered look, she understood that Nux has no clue about what is happening. Thinking that, she smiled and directly cupped his balls with her fair, tender hand. Oh, what is this, Nux? Nux's eyes opened wide when he saw her cupping his thing, he jumped back in shock and apologized. M ma'am, I am really sorry, I don't know h how it happened. He tried to hide his boner with his hands as he tugged it between his thighs and stuttered. 
just as I expected, seeing him responding just like how she expected, Viscount Felberta smiled before she grabbed his hand and smiled. It's all right, it's a perfectly natural thing. To be honest, I would have lost my confidence if you didn't have this sort of reaction after seeing my body. Hmm, let's see, how should we take care of this? I it is all right ma'am. It w will go away quickly, Nux replied in a very low voice. The tinge of red that was on his face turned a little brighter. What are you talking about? Do you take me as someone selfish? You waited in front of my room so that you can help me relax when I was tired, now that you are in this situation, do you think I will leave you alone? B but that is my duty. Hearing that, Viscount grabbed his chin, forcing him to look into her eyes, and she replied softly. You are mine now, it is my duty to take care of you as well, now don't waste time and lie down on the bed. I'll help you out, her voice was a lot more seductive than it was normal. Nux didn't argue and quietly did as she told her. Smiling, the Viscount removed his pant and underwear gently and a six-inch rod popped out. Let alone the Viscount, even Nux himself was surprised by his size, mind you, it was still not completely hard yet. Damn, I never thought my weapon was this strong. Oh, that's quite a size you have here, Viscount nodded, clearly surprised that such a cute boy has such a huge rack. Not that she complained, rather, she was happy since she knew it was all hers. With that thought, she grabbed Nux's rod with her soft and tender hand gently. As soon as she touched his shaft, Nux felt a huge electric bolt coursing through his body, starting from his tailbone and ending near his neck. He bit his lips and grabbed the bedsheets, trying to contain his moan. Seeing his reaction, the countess smiled before she started stroking his rod gently. Boo, fuck, this is good, way too good compared to masturbation. Mind you, Nux was a two times virgin, this bit of a simulation was enough for him to climb to cloud nine, especially when the one doing it was such a beautiful milf and a viscount to boot. His whole body flinched in pleasure but he still controlled and stopped himself from letting out a moan. As if seeing through his intention of not moaning, the Viscount took the challenge and sped her stroking. Ah, fuck, thick veins bulged on his dick, his rod now as hard as a rock and an 8-inch sword stood tall and proud even though the owner's body was quivering since the simulation was too much for a two-time virgin like him. Feeling that he was about to come, Nux titled his body a little and without telling her anything, his load burst out covering the Viscount's whole face with his. Hot, thick jizz. Ah tilde tilde, Nux sighed in pleasure as he glanced at the Viscount, and seeing her face covered with his thick and slimy jizz, he smiled and admired himself inwardly before he put on a panicked expression and shouted. Ah, ma'am I am sorry. I can't believe I did that. I am so sorry. He tried to stand up but his body, which was relishing the aftertaste of the frighteningly good feeling denied his command and he was forced to lie down. Ro. On the other hand, Viscount Felberta still couldn't believe what happened, in a daze, she used her finger to gather some jizz that was on her face before she put it in her mouth and tasted it. Finding it quite pleasant, her eyes brightened as she spoke. Who, now, why didn't you tell me that you were cum? Huh, I it just felt really good and everything happened very quickly, I I never experienced this before so I didn't know it would happen, Nux replied apologetically and emphasized the last part. It's alright, next time warn me when you are about to cum okay. The Viscount had a big smile on her face when she heard him. Nux nodded embarrassedly. All right, now go outside and the maid will take you to the bathroom, take a bath before sleeping, she replied gently. Why yes, I'll do it after I clean this RO. There is no need for that, we have maids to do all that. You just have to take care of yourself and return in time. Viscount smiled gently. Our return, of course, from now on, you will be sleeping with me, the room you have is just for you to spend time in when I am busy in my office, after I return, you have to stay here with me. Am I clear? Do you have any questions? And no, none at all. Good, the Viscount nodded before she walked into the bathroom that was attached to her room, hiding her embarrassed look. This is the first time someone came on her face. It was a new experience for her as well and, she did not hate it since she got to see his embarrassed expression. Of course, the major part of the reason was that Nux's jizz wasn't smelly or sour. Rather, it was somewhat pleasant. Ellipsis. Nux on the hand smiled widely as he saw the Viscount walking into the bathroom. He achieved his today's goal and the whole process was even easier than he imagined. The Viscount's Shota Khan nature is stronger than he thought. Of course, he wasn't actually a Shota but his body style matches one for sure. As he recalled the Viscount's face smeared in his jizz, he grinned wickedly and after recalling the effects it would have, his grin widened even more. It had other effects, of course, it did. Nux wasn't foolish enough to risk offending the Viscount just because of his satisfaction. He can't afford to do that, at least not at this stage. When he was reading about his system and his abilities, he found out that the closer and more erotic the contact between him and his target, the stronger the effects of his craving touch gets. The Viscount getting smeared with his jizz would make her crave for him even more. And obviously, the more the craving, the faster he will achieve his goal. 
His smiling face looked like a handsome demon who just tricked another innocent person due to his bidding. He quickly stood up and walked outside and entered the bathroom the maid pointed to. He wanted to bathe with the Viscount but he controlled his urges and calmed down. He knew if he plays his cards well, the Viscount will be the one to ask for this instead. Ellipsis. After taking a long bath, Nux returned to the room and saw the Viscount lying on the bed, glancing at him with a seductive smile. She was wearing a sky-blue-colored, loose nightgown, her hairs were still wet, making her look more captivating than normal. Nux didn't forget to continue his act as he blushed and glanced down. After smearing all your jizz on me, you still dare to blush in embarrassment. The Viscount chuckled, and no I didn't Maya. Ha 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 Tilda it's so fun to tease you Tilda alright, now don't keep standing. There, come over, I am already very sleepy. Seeing him panicking, the Viscount chuckled. Nux walked over with an embarrassed look before he lay down beside her. Okay, good night Tilda, Viscount muttered as she closed the lights and hugged Nux from behind like a body pillow, her ample chest touching his frail back, causing him to have a slight reaction in the lower part of his body. Gee good night, Nux replied. He knew this night would be a sleepless one since there is no way he can sleep while an alluring woman like Felberta hugs him from behind and her long legs crosses over his. She was practically glued to him. Not that he hated this feeling, he could have never gotten someone as beautiful as the Viscount to hug him while she sleeps in his previous life so, currently, he was fully satisfied. Thinking about how potent his craving touch will be after this night, he got even more excited. He noticed that even his previous calculations were wrong. He didn't need five days at all. Two to three days would be enough to complete this mission. It was an error on his part. Of course, such errors were warmly welcomed by him. Chapter 12 Good, now touch me here Tilda. Jolts of pleasure forced Nux to wake up from his sleep, he then subconsciously glanced at his dick, which was somehow out in the open while his pants were down. He then saw a jade white hand stroking his rod lovingly. He didn't need to think twice and instantly knew the culprit who was behind this, he slowly turned his head and saw Viscount Felberta with a slightly red face, smiling at him. Oh, you are awake. I noticed your little brother was quite excited about this new morning so I decided to give him a hand. M ma'am it happens every morning, you don't have to trouble yo. It's alright, as I said before, you belong to me, it's my duty to take care of you, Viscount Felberta replied. Though she said the thing as before, this time, her breathing was a little erratic while her face had a tinge of red. The craving touch is absurd. Nux thought inwardly while he blushed and nodded meekly. Bolts of pleasure assaulted him wave after wave but it wasn't as bad as yesterday. Last time, he was someone inexperienced, but now that he had already experienced it once, he will try his best to hold out for as long as possible. As if she knew what he was thinking, Viscount Felberta instantly changed her strategy as bent her body and she crawled towards his crotch. All right, I'll show you something good today Tilda. Saying that, she pulled her gown down, only enough for her large milky breast to pop out, standing upright, as they were being supported by the gown. Seeing those white twins with a pink cherry on the top could make any man drool. Nux dreamt of squeezing those soft mounds of flesh as much as he wanted, it took all his willpower to not stand up and grope those juggers. But moments later, he thanked himself for not giving in and staying where he was since what happened next was something he never imagined would happen, at least not in the recent future. Viscount Felberta positioned herself carefully and then her two huge mountains engulfed his huge rod, and a soul-stirring pleasure assaulted his mind. Thousands and thousands of bolts of pleasure ran throughout his body and he felt this weird numbing sensation all over his body. The legendary Titfuck Tilda, ah Tilda, despite trying his very best not to, he couldn't help but release a satisfied moan. His whole body twitched, and the pleasure he felt as his dick rubbed her cleavage while being mushed by two soft and beautiful pair of breasts was a thousand times better than the hand job she gave him yesterday. His eyes rolled back and his back arched up, trying to resist the enormous pleasure he was feeling. Satisfied by his reaction, Viscount Felberta smiled and increased her speed, further intensifying the pleasure he was feeling. However, Nux still resisted. He still fought the urge to come right away. As if provoked by this, Viscount Felberta's eyes met his, while maintaining eye contact, she lowered her head, and licked her luscious red lips, before she kissed the tip of his dick that popped out of her breasts. Ooh Tilda, stimulated by this heavenly scene, Nux wasn't able to hold it any longer and his jizz burst out, once again spreading all over Viscount Felberta's face and her milky breasts, this time though, it was more concentrated near her mouth. Ha, 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 Nux breathed heavily, his chest moving up and down in quick successions. This time, there were no thoughts about how this would help him with his goal, or how should he act to please the Viscount. His mind was already numb because of all the stimulus it has received. You really like to spread your milk all over my face, don't you? Viscount Felberta teased, it ha, it just felt too good, ha, Nux replied without thinking. Seeing him like that, Viscount Felberta smiled as she shook her head. You don't take my orders seriously, do you? I told you to tell me before you come but you ignored it. 
This time, Nux's head cleared up and he quickly replied, I I am. Extremely sorry ma'am, I, he thought he somehow offended Viscount Felberta but soon he noticed the teasing smile he had on her face. Although that smile looked more like a foolish smile with his milk spread all over her enchanting face. But that too gave her a different kind of a charm and was enough for Nux to feel a slight reaction in his lower body even though he had just come a moment ago. Hey Tilda I never said I don't like it, although you still require some punishment for listening to my order, Viscount Felberta muttered. I I will go through any punishment ma'am gives me to without fail. Nux nodded seriously. Ha ha ha, look how serious you are. It's like I will punish you with death or something. Don't worry, it will just be a light punishment. You might even enjoy it a little bit Tilda. Viscount Felberta replied as she licked her lips sensually and at the same time she tasted Nux's milk again. A different kind of satisfaction washed over her body as she noticed the jizz all over her and that handsome boy lying on her bed with a tired look. My money is not wasted at all Tilda, she nodded inwardly before she smiled. All right, it's time for me to go to work after I take bath, I will see you after I return. Okay, I I will wait for your return in front of your room like yesterday. I really did not waste my money at all Tilda. Dot dot dot. With an unusually bright mood, Viscount Felberta walked toward her office to start the day. As a Viscount, most of the matters are handled by her subordinates, of course, that does not mean she does not do anything. She is more like a CEO who takes care of everything around and manages everything. However, these few days, she is exceptionally busy. This is the last week of the eighth month, and also the week in which the Viscount has to work harder than normal since she can't ignore the tax collection and leave it to her subordinates. She has to read reports about the amount of tax collected, how to deal with those who haven't paid the taxes and all that. Ro. She settled down on her chair and a few minutes later, a man wearing a black coat over a white shirt walked over and bowed. Greetings, Viscount Felberta, he was Joyob, the butler of Viscount Felberta. Felberta nodded and Joyob started. The farmers are unable to pay the taxes this month due to the draft. They say that they spent all their saving on paying the tax last month and can barely afford food to eat right now. I had some men check the situation, and confirmed that what they say is true and the farmers are really having a hard time. Felberta nodded before she closed her eyes, Joyob stayed silent without interrupting her thoughts and a few minutes later, Viscount Felberta spoke. All right, take their lands and free them from taxes for the next whole year. Joyob's eyes widened when he heard that and he countered, but Viscount, the land they own has a lot more value than the tax they owe us. Aren't we just extorting them? Of course not, those farmers are fools, if we force them to pay tax, they will sell their land to someone else at cheaper prices just to pay the taxes for the next few months and then will become homeless without anything to do. This will lower the food production and reduce our taxes as well, therefore, it is better to take their lands, of course, we aren't really taking them, we will just have them on paper. We will allow the farmers to farm on them and if they pay 10% higher taxes for the next 12 years, we will return their lands to them. As for the taxes, use the treasury to pay for it. Joyob was enlightened and inwardly praised Viscount Felberta for coming up with this plan, but soon, he furrowed his brows and questioned. But what if the draft reappears within the next 12 years? What shall we do then? We will just increase the number of years they will have to pay extra taxes, no big deal, Felberta waved her hands nonchalantly and Joyob couldn't help but be more impressed by her vision. I believe I can leave this matter to you now. Yes, Viscount Felberta, I'll give you the report within the next two days. Joyob nodded, as efficient as ever. Dot dot dot. The meeting continued, and the more time passed, the more uncomfortable the Viscount felt. She sneakily lowered her head and felt a weird twitching inside her little sister. She rubbed her thighs with each other, trying to calm this weird feeling but nothing happened. Feeling helpless, she ignored this and continued listening to the reports. Viscount Florence Reeds has asked if 9 in the morning is a good time to meet up. Hum, meet up. Did we plan on meeting tomorrow? Joyob furrowed his brows in confusion before he replied. Viscount, it's Marcus Eduard's daughter's 21st birthday and they plan to celebrate it. We have received the invitation a week ago, I believe it would be disrespectful to the Marcus if we don't go there. Felberta then recalled reading the invitation letter and nodded. Being a mere Viscount, she can't afford to offend someone like Marcus so she has to go there. Also, this party will have some sort of political importance since many nobles who haven't decided which prince they would support will appear there, so it is speculated that even the princes will join the party. Alright, tell her that I will be ready by 9 and we shall leave before 9.30. We can't afford to be late. Also, have you thought about the gifts? Viscount need not worry about that, I have already prepared it. Felberta nodded as she said, alright, you can take a break now. We will discuss the rest after two hours. As you command, Joyob, even though he noticed that today's break was a little early and longer than usual, didn't think too much and bowed before he left. As soon as Joyob left, Viscount's solemn face changed and she quickly lifted her gown before plunging her finger into her canal and started pleasuring herself. 
Ha Tilda what is happening, what is this tickling feeling? This never happened before, although it felt really good as she masturbated, she still felt something was missing. Suddenly, a face that has been appearing in her mind, again and again, appeared once more. She then calmed down, fixed her gown and called her maid. Call Nux. The maid bowed before she left. A while later, a boy with an otherworldly face entered the office and greeted in a low voice. Good afternoon ma'am. Viscount smiled as she signaled him to sit on the chair beside her. Now Nux, do you remember how I helped you this morning? Nux's face turned red as he nodded embarrassedly. Now I want you to help M. Of course, you can order me to do anything. I will surely do my best to satisfy you. Before Felberta could even complete her sentence, Nux stood up and replied quickly. Felberta chuckled seeing him like that as she replied. Good, now touch me here Tilda. Chapter 13 The Scary Craving Touch. Good, now touch me here. Wah well, what, Nux stood there, dumbfounded. He could not believe that she was being so direct. What, didn't you say you would do anything I say, are you going back on your words? And no, I'll do it, Nux's face turned red, and then even redder before he quickly got on his knees as he glanced at the red-colored gown. Gulp, he gulped inwardly, Viscount Felberta is really too beautiful. He then held the lower part of the gown before pulling it up, revealing her slender, long legs. His movements were very slow, it might look like it was because he was embarrassed, but Nux was just relishing and appreciating the feeling of unclothing a beautiful lady like her. He felt like he living a dream. A dream he would never want to wake up from. On the other hand, the slower his movements, the more Felberta anticipated what was about to come as her heart started beating loudly. The tingling sensation which she barely suppressed burst out, this time more potent than the last. Soon, Nux's hand reached her little sister before he glanced at her. She nodded, signaling him to continue. Nux smiled seeing her rushing like that, he wanted to tease her a little, but he knew he was not in a position to play it like that. He needs to be careful and act as an obedient boy toy. Time was in his favor, he just needs to wait for a while and then he will be able to do what he wanted. Without any delay, Nux directly shifted her black panties aside, revealing her gorgeous pink pussy with a little to no hair around it, and seeing a clear way, he immediately plunged the tip of his middle finger into her canal. And Tilda, getting the reaction he wanted, Nux smiled inwardly before he pushed forward. And Tilda, jolts of pleasure assaulted the Viscount's body, somehow, the pleasure was a lot more powerful than when she did it herself. Not finding anything to hold, she directly clasped Nux's head and pushed his face right into her plump breasts. Nux noticed that she was a lot more sensitive than normal, he then smiled as he slipped his index finger inside as well. And Tilda, he felt her grip getting tighter around his head as she pushed him deeper into her cleavage, her legs also crossed around his, as if afraid that he will go away. Although this position might look like it was a little uncomfortable, her body's softness made it one of the most comfortable positions he can ever be in. With his two fingers, he teased her wet, squishy and sides without rest. Her moans sounded like blessed music to his ears. And Tilda and Tilda and Tilda. The more she moaned, the faster he moved his finger, and as soon her moans decreased, he would reduce his speed, forcing her to moan louder. And Tilda and Tilda and Tilda. Noticing the pattern, the Viscount continued to moan with all her might while she also tightened her grip around Nux, as if trying to merge his body with hers. Soon, Nux felt her insides twitching uncontrollably and he knew she was about to come, without warning he increased his speed even further, his movements a lot rougher than before. And Tilda and Tilda and Tilda and Tilda and Tilda. Oningfish Tilda Tilda, Felberta's body twitched uncontrollably before she arched her body and her juices gushed out without pause. Nux's whole hand was covered in her juices, he felt her grip around him weakening, he stood up and questioned. M ma'am, was my performance satisfactory? He sounded very nervous. Viscount Felberta, on the other hand, was breathing heavily before she slowly raised her eyes to meet his and replied. Ha, satisfactory, it was ha, as if you have done ha, this countless times. Hearing that, Nux shook his head in panic as he replied, and no I did not. I, I just thought that I will be doing something like this soon so I started reading about it so that I can do my very best, his last sentence was almost inaudible as he lowered his voice in shame. Viscount Felberta chuckled hearing that, but then she was surprised by the unexpected action Nux did. He sat down on the chair, before patting his thigh, with a face as red as a tomato, he spoke. I, I also read that after the woman comes, it would feel better if she sits on the man's lap. Ha ha, a man, huh, Felberta chuckled weakly as she saw him sitting there with a red face but then, she stood up and walked towards him before sitting on his lap. What the book said is really true, it does feel better than before, saying that, Felberta leaned her back on Nux's chest before she closed her eyes. Nux smiled as he rolled his arms over her thin waist and placed his chin on her shoulder. Maybe one more day, and she will be mine, he thought inwardly. What Viscount didn't notice was how she turned from someone who was always in control of the situation to someone who was sitting on his lap, 
tired and unable to move, and how scarily quick this whole transition was. Of course, even if she does notice this, she wouldn't care about this since right now, she was too tired and was busy enjoying the Nux's cuddles. Nux also wanted to knead her breasts but he knew his limit. He will wait a little more. Viscount Felbert's mind is clearing up little by little, he needs to act meek right now and just have a blush on his face, Ro. Dot dot dot. Nux and Felberta stayed like that for a little longer, but Nux knew that they couldn't continue like this for a long time and muttered shyly. Em ma'am, I think your break is about to end, you should stand up now. Um, no need, let me stay here like this, we still have an hour. But we also have to get this place cleaned, and, without saying any further, Nux started fixing her panties, and then her gown. There was no way he was going to let go of this chance to make her more dependent on him. You can't do your work like this, can you? He muttered. A small smile appeared on Viscount's face. She waited for him to fix her clothes before she finally opened her eyes and stood up lazily. You are right, let me go to the bathroom, you ask a maid to clean this place. Okay, Nux nodded, this time, although his face was still red, it was not to a degree where his movements were slow and stiff, showing that he is adapting to all the changes. It was also his way of slowly gaining control over the whole situation. Not noticing anything, the Viscount left and then Nux called the maid and got everything cleaned. Fifteen minutes later, Felberta returned, she had already fixed her makeup, looking at her giving off a strong and independent woman's aura, nobody could imagine she was the same lady who sat on Nux's lap powerlessly. Hum, there are still around 40 minutes before my work resumes, what should we do by then? She asked, why you still haven't eaten your lunch yet, ma'am, so you should eat it first. Ah, uh, I completely forgot about that. I wonder why is that? Hum, maybe it's because I have been having nutrients through some other means that I don't feel hungry anymore, what do you think? She smiled mischievously as she glanced at Nux's crotch and licked her lips. Nux's face turned red as he lowered his gaze in embarrassment. To divert her attention, he ordered the maid to bring lunch and acted as if nothing happened, however, he did not look very convincing with that red face of his. Ha 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 Tilda, Felberta laughed out loud when she saw him acting like that. The maids in this palace were efficient as ever. As if they were just waiting for the order, delicious and sizzling food was brought into the office. After the maids left, Felberta smiled before she glanced at Nux and teased, Now Nux, where should I sit? Does your lap sound good? Nux blushed and Felberta laughed. It is really fun to tease him, ha ha ha. Just as she was about to sit on her seat, Nux's voice was heard. Why you can if you want to. She glanced at Nux who was sitting on his chair with a red face, patting his thigh while avoiding her gaze. Viscount was surprised by his response, she just wanted to tease him a little, she never thought he would take it seriously. She wanted to shake her head and deny but when she glanced at his lap, something inside her stopped her. It is very comfortable there. She walked towards him and sat on his lap, her face had a tinge of red which she desperately wanted to hide from Nux. Noticing this, Nux smiled inwardly while he pretended that he didn't notice the red face at all. Just wait, it is still not the time yet. He was very patient, the Viscount made herself comfortable on her new seat before she hid her embarrassment and replied. Alright, now feed me. Expecting something like that from her, Nux shook his head inwardly while he nodded with a red face. Ellipsis. By the time the two of them were done with the lunch, it was already the time for the break to end. Okay, it's time for you to leave, but don't miss me too much okay? I'll return soon, Felberta teased as she stood up from his lap. I'll wait for ma'am in front of her room, Nux nodded and left the office. After he left, a smile appeared on his face as he thought about today's gains. He got one step closer to his goal, if he wished, he could complete his tonight but he decided not to rush things and be a little more patient. A few good things happened today, the first one being that he touched her little sister. He also got her to sit on his lap and then the last one was where he got her to feed him. Yes, after he was done feeding her, the Viscount offered him to do the same, which he of course accepted with a blush. He thought about tonight and decided that he would let her decide the pace for today. If he is the one deciding everything, he might give her a feeling of not being in control which he did not want, not until she is more attached to him. At the same time, he was also surprised by the monstrous ability he had, the craving touch. He still remembered her slightly red face when he entered her office and when he touched her canal, it was already wet. She might have masturbated but after noticing it did not work, she called me. That was straight up scary. Ellipsis. On the other side, as Joyov entered the office he saw an unusually energetic Viscount Felberta sitting with bright, shiny eyes as she declared. All right, let's end what's left so that we can leave and go back home as soon as possible. Chapter 14 Ah Tilda the Relief Tilda. The next day, Nux and Felberta were in a rush since it was already 8 in the morning and Felberta has to get ready by 9. Uggish, this is all because of you, who told you to have morning boners every morning. Not only that, you even had the galls to rub your tent on my ass. 
Viscount Felberta exclaimed in frustration. Nux on the other hand froze when he heard that and complained inwardly. What the hell are you talking about woman? How the hell do I control myself when I am hugging you? And I am rubbing my tent on you. Who are you kidding? Who was the one who was wiggling her fat ass in front of my dick and started teasing me? Huh, of course, he can't say that out loud so he continued his act as his face turned red. I I am sorry, I w would make sure I don't get like that in the morning. Ah, uh, no, you don't have to do that, it's a good sign that you get hard every morning, don't change it. Viscount Felberta felt that she lost something precious when she heard him and quickly corrected him. Oh okay, I'll make sure to get as hard as I can get every morning then. This time, it was Viscount Felberta's turn to turn red, she was dumbfounded by his answer but in the end, she could only nod. Gee good. The chaotic morning continued. Maids were called to clean the bed which had Nux's milk spread all over. Felberta rushed into the bathroom while Nux continued staring at the maids cleaning his jizz with an expressionless face. It was as if they were trained to not show any expression in any situation. Noticing that, an uncontrollable urge to see some lewd expressions on these maids' faces welled inside Nux's head. At that moment, the maids' bodies quivered for some unknown reason, it was as if they were locked onto by some wild beast. Ellipsis. Around 45 minutes later, Viscount Felberta entered the room, ready to go to the party, she was wearing an eye-catching black gown which was made from silk, and her hair was combed into a bun while she only had light makeup on. Combining all of this with her beautiful face and a succubus-like body, she looked really captivating. How do I look? She glanced towards Nux and questioned. Nux stood where he was, frozen. She furrowed her brows and waved her hand, hello. Nux. Ah, huh, how do I look? Beautiful, too beautiful. He muttered softly before he came out of his reverie and replied, Ah. I mean, you look really good, ma'am. Satisfied by his reaction, the Viscount nodded and smiled, All right, I will take my leave now. You take care of yourself, ask the maids if you want anything, okay. Nux does not have the status to go with her, in the end, he was just a boy toy. Even though Viscount Felberta might not see him like that, in others' eyes, he is just that. Of course, Nux wasn't too bothered either, it has just been two days since he came to this world, he isn't in a rush to rise in position. Who knows, maybe at the next party like this one, he might be called as a chief guest. Of course, Nux didn't forget to take advantage of this situation and deepen his impression in Viscount's mind. Why yes, see come back soon, Nux muttered softly. Oh, why should I come back soon? Would you miss me if I don't? Ye no, no, I mean, take your time and please enjoy the party to its fullest extent, I'll wait for you, Nux replied with a red face. Ha 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 Tilda don't worry, I was just teasing you. I will come back as soon as possible. The Viscount smiled as she left. Ellipsis. As she entered the living room, Felberta saw two women, wearing red and purple silk gowns sitting in front of her chatting with each other with smiles on their faces. These two were Florence Reeds and Willa Hart, both of them were Viscounts and Felberta's close friends. There were two men wearing the same suit as Joyob standing behind them. These two were their butlers. Willa noticed Filberta coming and stood up as she greeted, Morning, Sister Fell. Florence also stood up and her eyes brightened when they fell on Felberta. Oh ho, someone is looking really charming today. What's the matter? How come your face is looking so bright and lively? Huh, what do you mean? Don't I always look bright and lively? Ha, huh, there you go again with your narcissism. Florence rolled her eyes. But Flor is right, although you are always a charmer, you do look a little different today, Willa muttered. Although Flor and Willa were not as beautiful as Fell, they could still be called beauties in their own right. Flor had a petite body, blonde hair, and a small nose, combined with her energetic attitude, she looked lively and cute and was the youngest of the three, being only 24 years old. Willa, on the other hand, was the opposite, her breasts were larger than Fell's, combined with her black hair with brownish texture, she had a motherly charm and was the oldest of the group, being 31 years old. Come on sister Willa, I know she is a lost cause, but why are you teaming up with her? Felberta complained, ha, who are you calling a lost cause? You wanna fight? Floor snapped, ha ha ha, the two others started laughing and then Willa muttered, all right, we can talk in the carriage, let's go, we can't be late for this party. Felberta and Florence nodded as the three women entered the carriage. Ro, after a one hour ride on the carriage, the three appeared in front of a large mansion where different people wearing expensive looking clothes were roaming around. Seeing the lively atmosphere, Floor took a deep breath as she rejoiced, ha. This feels good, finally, I don't have to stay in my stinky mansion doing stinky work. Fell and Willa rolled their eyes when they heard her. The three of them were accompanied by their respective butlers and Floor's butler couldn't help but shake his head inwardly as he lamented. Why are you even complaining, I am the one doing all the work, you just sit there and complain. Nobody knew his troubles. While the three were looking around excitedly, a voice was heard which caused the three of them, along with their butlers to furrow their brows, especially Joyob. 
Viscount Falberta, I see you are looking as stunning as always. Yes, that is true, I do look stunning even if I do say so myself, but Viscount Hayden, I must stay, you are still as uncreative as ever. This is the thirteenth time I have heard you repeating the same line to start the conversation. Felberta turned around as she saw a man standing behind her, his face twitching due to her reply. He was Hayden Youngi, a Viscount who fancies fell but was rejected and now he pesters her everywhere they meet hoping to win her heart. Appearance-wise, although he couldn't be called ugly, he wasn't handsome either. Blonde hair, refined attire, pointy nose combined with that mole on his cheek, gave him a cunning look, which, actually isn't far from his actual personality. Of course, no matter how cunning he is, he never dared to use any tricks on Viscount Felberta. No, it was not because he was scared of some rules or something like that, but because he was scared of Felberta herself. A beautiful woman with a dead husband, a mother of one, and a noble Viscount to boot, who won't be charmed by her and would want to make her his. Many tried but they all failed. Her being able to survive in these conditions proves that although she may look like a mere Viscount, she was not as simple as that. Hayden, considering this factor searched her past and learned a piece of shocking news. A few years back, there was an earl who fancied Felberta and wanted to make her his concubine, after being rejected, he raged and decided to drug her and force himself upon her. Not only did his plan fail, but Felberta even demanded compensation, thinking that it should be solved with this payment, Earl agreed. But, coincidentally, the day after he delivered the compensation, all his crimes were exposed to the public along with their proofs. Of course, there is no noble in this world who hasn't committed any crime. But as they say, cheating is not an act worth punishing, getting caught is. The king was forced to take action and the earl was demoted to a mere baron. Of course, the punishment wasn't as simple as it looked, how could an ex-earl now a baron, survive while being in the bad books of one viscount and countless other enemies he created while being an earl? Unable to take the pressure, the earl sold all his properties and left the kingdom. What happened to him later was unknown. Knowing this, Hayden dared not play any tricks. Even an earl was unable to escape, how could he, a mere viscount take this risk? Although he liked beauties, he liked his life even more. All right, if you have nothing else to say, we will be taking our leave, since we have to meet a few of our friends later. Seeing that he was thinking about something, Felberta took this chance and walked away without giving him another glance. Hayden gritted his teeth, and then his eyes fell on another woman. Fixing his hair, he smiled and walked toward her. Viscount Freed, I see you are looking as stunning as ever. Ellipsis. The party started, in truth, normal birthday parties are only held in the evening, but Marcus Eduard really adores his daughter and therefore launched this grand party which covers breakfast, lunch, and dinner for the whole day. In these types of grand parties, only low-ranking nobles like barons and viscounts are required to arrive by the morning. Actually, in the past, it was these low-ranking nobles who arrived in the morning to build connections, but as the time passed, it became a trend and it was considered disrespectful if a baron or a viscount doesn't arrive in the morning. So right now, all the people here were either barons or viscounts. Of course, the noteworthy thing was that Marcus Eduard personally greeted all the guests without caring if they were barons or viscounts. This made everyone happy, and they even felt lucky that they joined this party. After the Marcus left, the barons tried to get into viscounts' good books, some introduced their children to each other, and some formed relationships in other ways. Of course, as experienced nobles, Fel and her friends didn't bother with viscounts and barons, they just greeted their friends before the three sat together and started chatting, catching up with each other. Although Fel, who was enjoying the conversation had already started missing a certain someone. Ellipsis. Time passed and afternoon fell, this was the time for the earls to make their entry. One by one, all the earls entered the hall, and after greeting each other, they were greeted by viscounts and barons. Even Fel and her friends greeted the earls they knew before everyone sat at the table and had their lunch. This time, Fel and her friends didn't sit alone, they were with a few earls along with some other viscounts. Fel, however, was already feeling that familiar sensation inside her little sister. She closed her legs tightly and straightened her back as she suppressed the feeling before she smiled and continued eating. Dot dot dot. After lunch, the garden was opened, Fel and her group excused themselves as they walked towards the garden, getting some fresh air. Time passed and it was time for the main party to start starting with Marcus, then the four dukes of the kingdom, and finally the three princes, all these big faces appeared one by one. After another round of greetings, Fel finally couldn't take it any longer as she spoke, Willa, Floor, I need to go the bathroom, I'll be quick, okay. K tilde, Floor replied and waved her hand nonchalantly while Willa nodded. Felberta walked away elegantly but when she detected no one around her, she quickened her pace and rushed into the bathroom before sitting on the seat and plunging her finger into her little sister. Ah tilde the relief tilde. Chapter 15 It looks like she really is sick. After a quick session of self-care, and suppressing the tingling feeling to a great extent, Felberta fixed her hair and her dress before walking out of the bathroom and joining Florence and Willa. 
Ha, huh, what took you so long? Floor questioned as she raised her eyebrows. Nothing, I was just fixing my makeup a little. HMPH, then why don't I see any changes? Your face just got a little red like a monkey. Floor snickered. Yo, alright, alright, stop fighting, there are dukes and princes here, think about your image. Willa, as mature as always stepped in before the two could embarrass themselves. Also fell, you came at the right time, the Marcus daughter is about to appear. Oh right, have you seen the Marcus daughter before? I once got a chance to and I can tell that she is prettier than fell. Floor chimed. Hum, I also saw her before, although she is indeed beautiful, I can say for sure that she is at best, on par with our Fel, why would you say she's prettier than her? Willa questioned, tisk tisk, Fel is already an old woman, in just a few more years, her face will be full of wrinkles, how can she be on par with the girl who is in her prime right now, Floor snickered. Felberta's lips twitched when she heard that. Noticing that, Willa quickly changed the topic, oh, I also heard that Candace, the Marcus's daughter is one of the strongest students in the Royal Academy. It is said that she's one of the most talented individuals in the empire right now and has a bright future ahead. Not only that, even the empress asked her hand for marriage for her son, the first prince. Although the Marcus rejected, saying that she would be the one deciding who she marries. What, the first prince? How can someone reject him? Just look at his face, he is so handsome. Money, power, and, face, what does he not have? He is a perfect man. Floor glanced at the prince with stars in her eyes. Although Felberta would have agreed with her in the past, now when she glances at the prince's face, another face, which is a lot more attractive than his appeared in her mind and she shook her head with a smile. She then glanced at Floor and furrowed her brows. I have to keep this bitch in heat away from him. Otherwise, she'll find all sorts of ways to pester me to get hands on him. A few minutes later, Candace Waters, the star of the party appeared. And though unwilling, Fel admitted she was indeed a beauty. She had blonde hair just like her father fair, delicate skin, beautiful blue irises, wearing a sky-blue colored gown with a dark blue design, she carried herself with elegance and a smile on her cherry-like lips. A beauty who is talented and has a bright future ahead of her. Felberta subconsciously compared herself with her, and couldn't help but shake her head. Floor is right, although she was beautiful, in a few more years, wrinkles would start appearing on her face. It could have been avoided if she had cultivated since young, but she, like many other lower-level nobles thought that creating more contacts is much more important than cultivation and ignored it. Ro. By the time she matured and realized its importance, it was already too late. This was also her biggest regret in her life and also the reason why she forced her son to join the Royal Academy even though he had the same thought as the past her. Sigh. Felberta sighed deeply before she shook her head to get rid of these useless thoughts. A face appeared in her mind as she smiled. I am sure he is missing me right now. I wonder if he is crying sitting in a corner with his face on his knees tilde foo 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 tilde. She was eager to go back home. Dot dot dot. The party continued. Many boys tried to impress Candace, even the princes but she, like an untainted flower rejected them all with a smile. On the other side, the political war between the three princes had already started. Right now, three princes each have a duke supporting them. As for the fourth duke, who should have been the breaking point and the deciding factor of this game, he decided to stay neutral since the one he supports is the second princess who, for some reason has no wish to participate in this battle. Of course, although a woman becoming a queen is rare, it was not like it did not happen in the past. Not only that but it was noticed that every time a woman ascends to the throne, the kingdom has seen unprecedented glory. But when he learned that the second princess has no desire to fight for the throne, he declared his neutrality and stayed back. This caused the other princes to focus on other nobles, the marquis and the earls, so they started securing the support of these nobles while the viscounts and barons readily tried to support any prince so they could rise in ranking. This game continued till dinner. Felberta, on the other hand, was already getting impatient and uncomfortable since the suppressed tingling feeling inside her little sister has already started acting. Flor and Willa also noticed her weird attitude and asked in worry, she just shook her head, saying she was not feeling well and continued eating dinner. The dinner ended, and many nobles still stayed talking about various things, mostly discussing which prince to support or how to win the heart of Candace Waters, who might be the next pillar of the kingdom. This time, Felberta didn't wait any longer and as soon as the dinner ended, she rushed back to her mansion. Seeing her walking figure, Florence couldn't help but mutter. It looks like she really is sick. Chapter 16 Mission Accomplished Author Notes I had two major things to address, I know that after reading the chapter, you wouldn't bother reading author notes and would rush to the next chapters, so I will write about it here. First, Spam Reviews Daos X5L, look my friend, I really appreciate how much you like and love my novel but think about it from my side. I promise you guys extra chapters for your reviews because I want more readers to read my novel and then give a genuine review. 
It would raise my novel rankings, reading time, valid reads, in the end getting more views and reaching more readers, and you guys will get your extra chapter, but now you have posted around 40 reviews, making my total reviews reach 50, but I only have around 15 genuine reviews. That isn't really fair to me, right? Isn't that the same thing as me reducing chapters length from 1000 to 250 words and then posting 16 chapters a day? You guys will be disappointed as well right? So let's do this, since you have posted 40 reviews, with 3 different reviews saying different things, I will treat them as 3 reviews and give you guys extra chapters calculating that. I hope you understand my plight and please don't get offended, I really value all my readers, especially readers who love my work. If you guys still feel I am in the wrong, comment here, and I will try to post more than 20 chapters, but please think about it from my side as well. Now the second issue, the readers are divided into two parts, some wanting first option, some the second chapter 5's author's note. So what I will do is I will take this Fairhope suggestion and divide the girls into two categories, first, being the main harem, the girls with real personalities and characters. The second one will be combat maids or maid assassins, you can choose between these two options. Thank you less than three. Dot dot dot. As soon as Viscount Felberta reached her mansion, she jumped out of her carriage and rushed towards her room, although the servants were surprised by her actions they didn't dare ask anything and her two maids started following behind her silently, keeping up with her with ease. Seeing a familiar figure sitting in front of her room, Felberta smiled and shouted excitedly. Nux. Ma. Nux wanted to act like he was excited seeing the Viscount again but he didn't expect her to rush into him and hug her without thinking about anything. He then noticed the unusual stiffness in her legs and understood what happened. Again, surprised by the ridiculously overpowered ability he has, he glanced at the maids and ordered. I'll take care of Viscount Felberta from here, you can excuse yourself for the day. The maids noticed the change in his tone in just two days but seeing the Viscount acting like that, they shook their heads and bowed before leaving. Nux on the other hand, smiled as he held Felberta's plump butt and carried her into her room. Though surprised by his actions, the Viscount didn't complain and let him do what he wanted to. Nux then gently placed her on the bed before he said in a soft tone, Ma'am, you must be tired, let me massage your body and help you relax. This time, there was no stutter in his words, his tone only carried a gentle but a compelling tone. Um, Felberta nodded before she closed her eyes. Then shall I help you remove your gown? Surprised by his words, Felberta opened her eyes and glanced at Nux. Nux blushed before he explained, You know how difficult it is to massage without direct skin contact, since I want you to feel the best, I request you to remove your gown. Finding his explanation logical, she nodded and allowed him to remove her gown. A small smile appeared on Nux's face before he quickly removed her gown and glanced at Felberta lying on the bed wearing nothing but a sexy black-colored bra and panties, with her back facing him. He also opened her hair since he liked open hair rather than the bun. With everything ready, he rubbed his hands. Together before she started with her shoulders, and slowly started moving down, her back shoulders, to her back, then her lower back, before he started kneading her plump ass with extra care and gentleness. And Tilda, jolts of pleasure assaulted Felberta's body, she wanted to question what he was doing but when his hands needed her butt, the tingling feeling which had been suppressed after she hugged erupted, and this time, it was far stronger than before. Combined with how good it felt when he touched her butt, she completely forgot all her questions and gave up. However, before she could thoroughly enjoy the feeling, Nux's hand continued down to her plump thighs and then to her legs and feet. Feeling frustrated, she wanted to tell him to continue massaging her buttocks and thighs, but she then felt his hands coming back to her legs, noticing the pattern, she stayed silent and enjoyed the massage. Nux smiled wide and seeing her acting like that. Of course, this time, he wasn't here to just massage her body, he was here to complete the mission and make Felberta his. Thinking it was time to jump to the next step, he massaged her butt before moving up. As his hands moved towards her back, Felberta shook her head inwardly before her eyes widened when she felt something touching her little sister. She quickly turned her head and saw a huge tent right in front of her little sister, she then glanced at Nux who was still massaging her back. Then he leaned forwards to massage her shoulders and his tent started rubbing her canal. And Tilda, she released a soft moan, Nux however, wasn't able to hear it. Her little sister started trembling, the tingling sensation this time was incomparably stronger than before. Gulp Tilda asterisk, an image appeared in her mind and she gulped thinking about that possibility. Ha, huh, Nux, she called out. Yes, I ha. I want you to massage me down there. Nux then stood up before he touched her butt and questioned, here. No, there. Nux's face turned red before he touched her little sister and questioned, here. Yes, okay. Nux nodded before he started, massaging, around her canal, enhancing her sensitivity. MMNH tilde and no, not with your hands. Then how should I do it? Nux questioned, perplexed. Felberta glanced at his crotch as she answered, W with that. Wa what? Nux stuttered as he blushed. He couldn't believe what she just asked. Jay just do it. 
Felberta ordered, her tone stern, although it would have been better if she wasn't stuttering. Ro. As U.S. say, Nux nodded with a face as red as a tomato before he lowered his pant and a big, eight-inch monster popped out. Gulp. Felberta gulped audibly, her anticipation and excitement, both were on another level. Nux also didn't waste much time, he skillfully removed her panties, and his rod directly entered her canal. Ooh Tilda, Anish Tilda, with her insides already wet from all the teasing and stimulations, Nux's dick directly slipped into her deepest part without any resistance whatsoever. Anish Tilda, Felberta moaned in delight, all the tingling she felt the whole day finally subsided and was replaced with the immense amount of pleasure, the pleasure so extreme that her eyes rolled and she took a deep breath before she let out a loud moan. She felt as if she was finally full. It has been seven years since her husband died, well, though she did call him her husband there was no romantic feeling between them. So after they had a son, they never had sex. Also, his weapon was a little small so she can't really say she felt very good when they did it, which, is completely different from now, where she was on cloud nine in just a single thrust. Uggish Tilda, of course, Felberta wasn't the only one feeling good. The two times virgin who finally lost his virginity felt jolts of pleasure assaulting his body as her warm and squishy insides clustered around his dick while her womb was already sucking his dick deeper and deeper as if it wanted to engulf the whole thing. If not for the training that he had been through in the last two days, he would have just come in this single thrust. Taking a deep breath, he collected his thoughts as he pulled back his dick before plunging it even deeper than before. Anish Tilda, Uggish Tilda, relishing the otherworldly feeling, Nux paused for a moment before he drilled her again, then again, and again, before he lost in pleasure and continued. Anish Tilda, Anish Tilda, Anish Tilda, Uggish Tilda, Uggish Tilda, Uggish Tilda. The two moaned as they mated like animals. Nux tried to go deeper with every thrust. Felberta clenched the bedsheets hard as she bit her lips so that she can control her moans, but it was clear that she failed miserably. Noticing that he was about to come, Nux slowed his thrusts before. Click, with a single click, he unplugged her bra and removed it. He then turned her body, making her face him. Felberta opened her eyes and seeing his naked body and otherworldly face covered with sweat, she smiled. She wasn't alone, even Nux was enjoying the view of her raven hair spread all over, a smile that was on her cherry-like juicy-looking lips while her delicious-looking twins moved up and down as she breathed. He did not waste any more time as he bent down and started licking her pink nipple while he kneaded her other breast with his hands. Another jolt of pleasure assaulted the Viscount. Anish Tilda, she moaned in pleasure before she grabbed his head and forced it deeper into her chest. Her lower body twitched in pleasure, her canals tightened, squishing and crushing his dick with her soft insides. Uganish Tilda, unable to cope with sudden pleasure, his milk burst out and he came. As his thick milk filled her insides, it was as if her last wall was broken and she moaned in ecstasy before her juices gushed out as well. Anish Tilda, suddenly, Nux felt some weird power flowing into his body, he wanted to check what it was but he was too tired to, also, he wanted to relish this heavenly feeling without any sort of interruptions. Nux then let his body fall on top of Felberta's, both of them didn't have the power to think about anything and stayed in the same position for the time being. Ellipsis. After a while, when Nux finally had the power to move, he moved to the right of the Viscount. Noticing the movement, she opened her eyes, and when her black irises looked into his golden eyes, she smiled sweetly as she nodded. It felt really good, Nux didn't answer, he just moved his weak body close to her and sealed her lips with his own. He didn't use his tongue since he was tired, so he just sucked her juicy lips for a while before he returned to his original place and nodded. It really did, Felberta on the other hand was dumbfounded and couldn't react to his sudden action at all. She just felt something amazing on her lips before the feeling disappeared, confusing and shocking her at the same time. You are quite bold, she commented. I I read it in the book, Nux blushed as he tried to avoid eye contact. Viscount smiled as she lifted her head and kissed his lips. I would really like to see the book you were reading Tilda. This sentence caused Nux to sweat uncontrollably. Did he read any book? Of course, he did not. Heck, he didn't even know how to read. Of course, as a professional actor, he continued his acting without panic and nodded with a red face. A few more minutes later, he finally removed his little brother out of her little sister before he moved her body a little hugged her from behind. He also did not forget to place his dick in the second most comfortable position which was between Felberta's plump thighs while slightly touching her canal. The Viscount's body trembled a little but she was too tired to say or do anything, so she directly closed her eyes and enjoyed Nux's gentle kneading of her breast with a smile on her face. Seeing her like that, Nux chuckled inwardly but just as he was about to close his eyes, he heard a sound in his mind. Ding, mission accomplished. Chapter 17 Dangerous, that was too dangerous. Ding, mission. Fuck Felberta Alve. Description. Well, fuck Felberta Alve. Reward. Eye of discerning. Warning. If the mission fails, the ability craving touch will be disabled. Time limit. 30 days. Status. Completed. Would you like to receive the rewards? 
Y-N. Excited, Nux pressed yes quickly. Ding, fusing eye of discerning into host's body. Suddenly, Nux felt unbearable pain in his eyes, but noticing Felberta sleeping soundly beside him, he gritted his teeth and used all his willpower to not scream in pain. Veins popped on his forehead while his whole body trembled. Oog fish. Suddenly, drops of blood trailed out of his eyes and it continued for a while. After a while, the pain finally subsided and a message popped out. Ding, eye of discerning fused successfully. Nux breathed heavily before he wiped the blood and opened his eyes. If one looked closely, different golden-colored patterns could be seen moving inside his golden irises, making him look more mysterious. His eyes then fell on Felberta and suddenly, a screen popped out. Name, Felberta Alve, age, 28, mana cultivation, mortal, body cultivation, mortal, closing square bracket, occupation, Viscount of Skyfall Kingdom, race, human, talent, low, LVL, 3, HP, 100 one hundredths, STR, 7, AGL, 8, VIT, 10, STM, 8, INT, 7, DEF, 7, I can see others status with this ability, damn, that's convenient, Nux rejoiced inwardly before he recalled that weird feeling he felt after he came and checked his status, status, as soon as he thought about it, a screen appeared in front of him, name, Nux Leander, age, 18, mana cultivation, mortal, body cultivation, mortal, closing square bracket, race, human, talent, low, LVL, 2, HP, 120 120th, STR, 8, AGL, 16, VIT, 12, STM, 13, INT, 10, DEF, 7, blank points, 3, ability, craving touch, eye of discerning, harem members, Felberta Alve, he leveled up, he calculated and concluded that with each level up, he gains two stat points for every attribute other than the intelligence stat, which he only gains one point for and three blank points. That means, he gets a total of 14 points with each upgrade. That's fucking overpowered. He thought about why he didn't get two points for intelligence stat but was unable to come up with an explanation so he shrugged. Wait, will my stats increase if I work out? Wait, why did I not think about this when I arrived in this world? Ah, I was too busy finding ways to fuck fell. Hmm, is this what they call post-nut clarity? Okay, let's not think about this nonsense. Let's sleep, I'll wake up early in the morning, and test my theory out. Thinking this, he tightened his hug around Felberta and entered the dreamland. Ellipsis. The next day, Felberta woke up with a satisfied smile on her face, she turned around before her eyes widened as she couldn't find Nux. All her drowsiness disappeared as she called the maids, Skyla, Lane, there was a tone of urgency in her voice. Master, two women quickly rushed into the room as they bowed. Where is Nux? The two maids glanced at each other before one called Skyla replied, Master, new um, Master Nux is in the garden, she didn't know how to address Nux after the, night the Viscount and he had so just called him Master. Hum, what is he doing in the garden? Fell questioned, H, leave it, I'll go check it out myself, before they could answer, Fell quickly stood up and just as she was about to leave, Skyla shouted, Master, at least wear some clothes. Fell looked down before she blushed a little, clearing her throat, she quickly wore a normal gown and walked towards the garden with two maids following her. As she walked into the garden, Felberta saw a handsome man, drenched in sweat doing push-ups on the ground. Although Fel could see his arms quivering, he continued and after a few more, his body finally fell. Fel wanted to rush towards him but when she saw a satisfied smile that suddenly appeared on his face, she stopped and decided to look at him a little more. Ellipsis. Name. Nux Leander. Age. 18. Mana Cultivation. Mortal. Body Cultivation. Mortal, closing square bracket, race, human, talent, low, LVL, 2, HP, 120 120th, STR, 8, AGL, 16, VIT, 12, row, STM, 13, INT, 10, DEF, 8, blank points, 3, ability, craving touch, eye of discerning, harem members, Felberta Alve, Nux who was now lying on the ground smiled as he saw his status. His experiment was proved successful, although he didn't receive many stats, his defense still improved by one point and he could feel that if he continued for a few more days, his strength would increase as well. He was regretting his decision of adding some of his points to his agility and stamina but he didn't think too much about it. He can't play with his life, he was sure he could gain many points in future. This was not his only gain though, he experimented a little and found out that unlike his craving touch eye of discretion was an active skill that would activate whenever he thought about it. It was a good thing, it would be weird if he was in front of a large group and all he could see is the system screen. He chuckled as he stood up and just as he turned, he saw Felberta looking at him with a smile on her face. 
He smiled back before he activated his eye of discretion and his eyes widened in surprise. Name, Skyla Hale, age, 25, mana cultivation, advance, body cultivation, mortal, closing square bracket, race, human, talent, medium, LVL, 24, HP, 280 280ths, MP, 390 390ths, STR, 29, AGL, 34, VIT, 28, STM, 32, Int, 39, Def, 27, Ellipsis, Name, Lane Whiny, Age, 26, Mana Cultivation, Advance, Body Cultivation, Mortal, Closing Square Bracket, Race, Human, Talent, Medium, LVL, 23, HP, 270 270ths, MP, 370 370ths, STR, 33, AGL, 28, VIT, 27, STM, 29, Int, 37, Def, 34, dot dot dot, they can crush me with their fingers. He gulped inwardly and swore that he would treat them with respect. Now that he thinks about it, he realized that a Viscount like Felberta can't possibly be left around unprotected. If not, then even random cultivators could destroy a noble's whole house and chaos would ensue. He also noticed that MP stat which he did not see on his own, or Felberta's status, thinking that it may appear after he levels up a little, he ignored it. Why the sudden need to exercise? While Nux was lost in his thoughts, Fel questioned with an amused smile. I just thought I should start exercising a little now that, he blushed mid-sentence and stopped. Now that what? Nothing, Nux replied as he sneaked a few glances towards Fel's crotch area. Understanding what he was thinking Fel blushed and just as she was about to say something, Nux continued. By the way, you look really beautiful today, Lady Fel. He also subtly changed the way he addressed her. He can't stay in this weak position forever, right? Nux had decided to initiate his second plan. Of course, he will still be patient with everything since he knew he should not rush things. Surprised by the sudden compliment, Fel didn't know how to react and retorted. Huh, what do you mean, I didn't even take a bath yet. So what, just look at your face, other women can't have this beauty even if they bathe 100 times a day. Nux hushed and before she could even react he walked towards her and continued. Of course, after you take bath, you will look even more attractive and also, you are getting late for the office so let's get going. Sister Lane, please prepare bathwater for Lady Fell. Saying that, he took Fell's hand as they walked toward her room. Lane on the other hand was confused, how did he know my name? Ellipsis, you changed, as she was walking with Nux, the Viscount muttered. Huh, I said you changed, you are bolder than usual. W.L., I did transform into a man from a boy, Nux replied as he blushed. A man, Fell muttered before she thought about a possibility. Wait, is that the reason you were working out this morning? Nux didn't reply as he continued walking while he tried to hide his red face. Ha 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 Tilda so that's why Tilda now I know why you were acting so weirdly, you became a man. Ha 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 Tilda, Fell laughed out loud while Nux continued walking without responding. As they walked inside her room, Fell smiled mischievously as she questioned. But Nux, what if I want you to stay how you were? I can't do that, Nux replied instantly. Oh, but didn't you say you will do whatever I want you to? Fell questioned with an amused smile when suddenly, Nux stopped walking before he cornered her to a wall and placed his hand in front of her shoulder, cutting all her escape routes. His movements were so fast that Fell couldn't react to them. I did say that, Lady Fell. But I won't do anything that you might be sad about in the future even if it is you who tells me to. Although surprised and a little excited for some reason, Fell kept her calm as she questioned. Oh, why would I be sad if you stay like the cute little boy you are? Nux smiled at her question before he closed his eyes, tilted his face and moved closer to her. Fell's heartbeat quickened, she closed her eyes and moved her lips a little forward but suddenly, she felt Nux's lips moving past hers and they arrived in front of her right ear as he whispered seductively. Oh you will Tilda you will definitely miss out on a lot of things if I stay like the cute little boy I was. Why don't you trust me with this one? K. Felberta's heart raced and her face turned red, and as if compelled by some force, she nodded weakly. She only opened her eyes when she felt Nux had moved away from her. But unexpectedly, instead of his confident look, she thought he would have, she found a Nux with a bright red face as he muttered. I I am still not very e-experienced with this, gee give me some time. Felberta didn't know how to act. Her emotions were in turmoil, she found the, man, Nux extremely attractive but she also found this, boy, Nux extremely cute. She was confused about who was better. But just as she thought about this question, the image of Nux cornering her into a wall popped into her mind, she felt her little sister tingling and she quickly came to an answer. She then glanced at Nux who was blushing and avoiding her eye contact and couldn't help but laugh out loud. Ha 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 Tilda alright, I am getting late. I'll go and have a bath while um, you do whatever you want. 
Nux nodded and Fel quickly walked towards the bathroom. Her heart was still beating rapidly as if she ran a marathon. Her face was red as she recalled her being pushed into a wall. Dangerous, that was too dangerous, my heart nearly exploded. She muttered. Chapter 18 Ha, huh? it looks like I have to clean it again. Author's note. All right, you guys, from now on, the chapters will have the normal length, 1000 words. Thank you for bearing with me on this weird roller coaster like ride. I hope you enjoy the future chapters. Dot dot dot. Right now Viscount Felberta was sitting inside her big bathtub wearing absolutely nothing, her face was red and her movements were stiff. At the moment, her mind was occupied by a single person, and that was Nux. Remembering how he pushed her to the wall her face turned even redder as she snorted, HMPH. How dare he talk to me like that. He has become a man, he says. Suddenly, the images of him drilling his hard dick into her appeared in her mind and her movements stopped. But it did feel good though. What felt good? Lady fell. Suddenly she heard a familiar but unfamiliar voice. She turned back and saw Nux standing in front of her, completely naked other than a towel covering his crotch. W why are you here? She questioned with a flustered look on her face. She did not expect him to appear in front of her like that just when she was thinking about him. Hum, I figured that I should help you take bath and decided to come here, saying that, he walked into the bathtub and sat beside her as if it was completely normal. In reality, even Nux was feeling a little embarrassed and shy about this, he was worried that his actions might backfire but then he shoved all his worries away. He had to take the risk, he can't stay too passive or he will stay like a boy toy forever. He needs to be bolder and more unrestrained. Of course, he could only do it now because he was sure that the Viscount can't live without him anymore. So although she might punish him if she was dissatisfied, she won't kill him. And since the rewards were enough, he decided to take this risk. Ha, huh, when did I say I needed your help to take bath? Felberta questioned, how can someone as intelligent and beautiful as you need someone's help to take bath? I just thought that it would be more convenient for you if I did that. After all, I was brought here so you can relax, wasn't I? He says that as he picked her up and placed her on his lap. He then positioned his chin on her shoulder and questioned seductively. I am sure you prefer it that way, don't you? And before she could reply, he offered. Of course, if it's uncomfortable for you in any way. Just say a word and I'll leave as quickly as possible. He even slightly pushed her away as he said that. No, I it's okay, you can do it if you want to. She couldn't win against this, man, Nux. Nux smiled and picked up the soap as he replied. Then I believe I should start it quickly since Viscount must be getting late. He picked her a bit and then placed her in a more comfortable position, for him of course. He placed his dick right between her thighs and pussy as he interlocked his legs with her. Then he started from her thin waist, before avoiding her beautiful bare breasts as he cleansed her shoulders and arms. He then moved down, avoiding her breasts again before cleaning her thighs, of course, he gave special care to her inner thighs, going marginally close to her little sister before pulling back. Filling her with anticipation and disappointment at the same time. Ro. MMHM tilde tilde. A soft moan came out of Felberta's mouth. Deciding that he teased her little sister enough, he returned to her waist, but this time, he circled around her lower breasts without touching her before moving to the shoulders and repeating the same with her upper breasts. Viscount Felberta on the other hand felt different sensations as his hands moved, her little sister quivered in frustration while her breasts felt some weird itch and her soft, light pink nipples hardened. The smile that appeared on Nux's face when he saw her reaction made him look no less dangerous than a scheming demon who traps maidens with his plans. At the same time, his rod also hardened as he started moving it a little, experiencing pleasure from her plump thighs and at the same time teasing her little sister more and more. The Viscount's breathing quickened as her body started trembling in frustration, finally, she gave in to the temptation and requested. See clean there as well. Where, Lady Fell, am my breasts, as you say, saying that, he suddenly grabbed her squishy breasts and started, cleaning, them roughly. And Tilda, the Viscount yelped in pleasure and surprise, causing her to tighten her fleshy thighs, which suddenly increased the pleasure Nux was feeling. Oog, the sudden stimulus forced him to leak his milk as he stained the Viscount's thighs and her little sister with her jizz. Oops, looks like I have to clean that area again. Saying that, his hands moved towards her thighs as he washed them again before his fingers moved towards her canal which was already twitching uncontrollably after his jizz fell on top of it. His finger circled around her entry for a little while before he pinched her erect clitoris, causing her to moan in ecstasy. On tilde tilde, hum, I think it somehow went inside, let me clean it thoroughly then. Without waiting for confirmation, his middle finger directly entered her pussy followed by his index finger. His two fingers rubbed her wet and mushy insides, finding all her weak points. Onish tilde onish tilde onish tilde. Felberta kept moaning in pleasure as he played with her pussy, suddenly, a weird idea popped in Nux's mind as he brought his lips closer to her left ear and FH woo tilde tilde. He blew some air into her ear softly. Felberta's body jerked weirdly before her canal tightened and 
On Ashtilda, she came, her juices gushed out without stopping, staining her thighs all over again. Ha, it looks like I have to clean it again. Chapter 19 Assistance with Different Fields of Work After what could be called the longest bathing session she ever had, Viscount Felberta walked out of the bathroom with a satisfied yet strict expression. We are late and this is all because of you. What do you have to say in your defense? I deeply apologize for the inconvenience I have caused although I will say. It felt really good, did it not? Viscount Felberta's lips twitched when she heard his remark. She wanted to reprimand him but when she thought about it, it really felt good. Ag, I am being led astray by him. She clenched her fist in frustration but when she remembered the pleasure she felt a few minutes ago, she decided to let him go. Ha, I am really weak against him. All right, no point complaining since we are already late, let's move quickly so we can save some time, she stated as she quickened her pace. Wait, I am going with you. Nux questioned. Yes, I decided to take you as my butler from now on. But I don't know anything butlers do. You don't have to worry about it. Joya will take care of that, you just have to follow me. You can't keep staying here, can you? Lady Fell, you don't have to go through this roundabout way, just tell me that you can't bear to stay away from me and I'll follow you even if you walk into hell. Felberta's lips twitched, she wanted to retort to that but deep down, she knew what he said was true. Ah, he is annoying, where the hell did my cute nux go? You sure have a glib tongue, don't you? I believe Lady Fell knows more about it than I do, he purposefully glanced at her firm breasts before he licked his lips seductively. Understanding what he meant, Felberta's face flushed before she sighed. Ha, I really miss the past Nux, he was so sweet and cute, unlike the now you, you are just a rude person. Do you really, really mean what you said? Lady Phil, why don't you ask your puss heart and see what it says? Felberta used her right to remain silent. Although she did miss the, boy, Nux a little, if she were given a choice, she would choose the, man, Nux any day. After all, no matter how much thick-faced she has, whenever she ordered Nux to do anything, she always felt like she was manipulating a little boy, although it felt good, in some part of her mind, she felt a little weird. Nux now, on the other hand, steps us and seduces her on his own accord. His playful words feel good and his little forceful methods get her heart racing. After all, in the end, she bought him as her boy toy, someone who would satisfy her sexually. Of course, what Felberta doesn't realize is that Nux's importance in her heart has long passed what any random, boy toy, has. If she was given a choice to choose between her close friends and Nux, she might not be able to choose her friends even if she was given enough time to think. Ellipsis. As the two of them entered Fell's office, they saw a middle-aged man standing inside the office, wearing a black suit. Without wasting any time, Nux activated the eye of discretion and this man's information appeared in front of him. Ro. Name. Joy Obfrey. Age. 59, Mana Cultivation, Master, Body Cultivation, Mortal, Closing Square Bracket, Occupation, Butler of Viscount Felberta, Race, Human, Talent, Low, LVL, 31, HP, 350 350ths, MP, 550 550ths, STR, 36, AGL, 41, VIT, 35, STM, 39, Int, 55, Def, 35, Ellipsis, Joyob, let me introduce him to you, he is Nux, he will be my new butler from now on. Hearing that, Joyob frowned as he questioned, Viscount Felberta, isn't he the bee? Yes, he is, but from now on he is my butler. Joyob couldn't help but notice the defensive tone she had when she cut him off mid-sentence. What kind of magic has this kid done on her? He couldn't help but doubt if Nux was some sort of evil cultivator who somehow hypnotized Viscount Felberta. If it wasn't for how he could not feel even an ounce of energy coming out of his body, he would have attacked him already, but Viscount, does he know what he has to do as your butler? He questioned, you don't have to worry about it, then what about his cultivation? How would he protect you if he is so weak? You know that a butler is also a bodyguard who guards his master with his life. Oh yes, thank you for reminding me, I have decided to provide him with our house's best cultivation technique, he is still young, and I believe he can catch up with others. But, Joyob wanted to argue further but he couldn't find any points. Noticing that he was acting weird, Felberta thought about it and quickly understood his dilemma and smiled. Butler Joyob, you have taken care of me ever since I was a child. You don't have to worry, I won't treat you or your family badly. I know you have been training your son to become my butler after you retire, this won't change after Nux's appearance. I am not firing you or your son. Joyob glanced at Viscount before he tried to avoid her gaze, embarrassed that he was seen through easily. Also, a sense of relief washed over his body when he heard her and he sighed. Yes, although I have appointed Nux as my butler, he is not exactly my butler, he is more of an assistant, no wait, you are kind of my assistant as well. 
Um, forget it, just remember you two have different jobs. Viscount's words not only confused Joya but even she couldn't understand what she was saying. Behind her, Nux snorted inwardly when he heard her words. Tisk tisk, what's the point of covering up? Just tell him that we both are your assistant the only difference being that while he works on the papers, I work on your body. Chapter 2020 Trust me, I know a very good exercise to heal this stiffness till the asterisk. Author's note. Again, I will warn you, if you don't want to get blue balled, wait for the next chapter that I will post in two hours tilde tilde. Read at your own risk skeleton face. Dot dot dot. After introducing Nux to Joyob, the Viscount continued with her work. However, soon she noticed that her speed and efficiency has improved a little. It was only a little but it couldn't be hidden from the Viscount's eyes. Also, now that Nux was standing right behind her, even after working for a long time, she didn't feel the tingling feeling she was so annoyed by. Of course, that doesn't mean that they wouldn't have their fun during the break time. The Viscount smiled, looking forward to the lunch break. On the other hand, seeing her working so efficiently and elegantly, Nux was thoroughly impressed. He was awed by how she solved the farmer's problem, her fast decision-making skill was something very hard to have. She looked like a perfect, empowered lady. And when he thought about how he had this empowered lady sitting on his lap, he smiled evilly and waited for the lunch break. Ellipsis. All right, this is enough. You can take your lunch break now, you have two hours. As you say, Viscount. After a bow, Jayob quickly left and noticing that Nux was still inside, he finally understood what kind of assistant he was. Nux didn't know what Joyob was thinking about, even if he knew, he wouldn't care. He just smiled as he walked towards Viscount Felberta, placing his hands on her shoulders, he smiled. Lady Fell, you must be tired after working for so long. Knowing that she wouldn't need to ask what she needed, Felberta smiled inwardly, looking forward to how he will turn this situation to his advantage and do something lewd. MMHM, of course, she didn't forget to help him with his script and nodded. Your whole body must be stiff, is it not? MMHM, my whole body is very tilde stiff. I understand, I could help you with some massage, but I believe that would make you a little too relaxed, affecting your work in later hours. Hmm, that's certainly true. Then how about I help you with some stretches? Stretches. Yes, then Lady Fell, since we are tight on time, let's start it as quickly as possible. Though she couldn't understand what he wanted, she nodded then stood up and let him do whatever she wanted. All right, first, let's get rid I mean, let's remove your gown. Then without waiting for her response, Nux quickly and skillfully removed her gown. Today, she was wearing a purple-colored bra and panties. The contrast between her pure white skin and these dark purple undergarments made her look really alluring. Damn, she has a very irresistible body, Ro. No matter how many times he has seen her, he would always get enraptured by her. Her perfect hourglass figure that he could only imagine in the past fantasies, even those film stars or models did not have a body like hers. All right, now sit down, straighten your knees and open your legs as wide as possible. Felberta did what he told, she stretched her legs as wide as possible and though it was not a straight line, it was still very close to it. Nux was impressed by how flexible her body was, he also did not miss the chance to rub her inner thighs, helping her to stretch more. Now bend down, and try to touch your toes with your hand tilde, Nux whispered as he supported her back. She bent down, feeling the stretch on her thighs but she couldn't really focus on it since that demon was still kneading her inner thighs while teasing her little sister again and again. Alright, now to the same with another toe. Completely ignoring her frustrations, Nux continued to take advantage of her body as he, helped, her with her stretches. Dot dot dot, okay, now to the next stretch. He then made her sit in the classic Japanese position, the Siza position, and then told her to slowly push her back backwards. Felberta's body was very flexible, her head nearly touched the floor while being in this position. Of course, Nux still supported her head on his lap, as he kneaded her soft and fleshy breasts without removing her bra. And Tilda, she moaned in delight and seeing her face flushed and red, Nux felt his little brother twitching. All right, a little more, yes, that's enough. Breathe a little as we move to the next one. He then made her sit on all fours, though embarrassed, Viscount still did as he told. Smiling, Nux instructed, now arch your back, lift your butt and head and stay in the same position till I say otherwise. Nux smiled evilly as he placed his hand on her firm but juicy ass, teasing her as much as he wanted. He felt her body twitching and was sure it was not due to the stretching she was doing. Felberta felt the familiar tingling sensation inside her little sister. His hand circled around her ass, teasing her little sister from time to time. Her pussy twitched in frustration, the Viscount could feel her little sister was missing something. Something big. Satisfied after groping her for a while, he instructed. All right, this should be enough, now to the nay. It's enough, I think my body is fine now. Knowing full well that he only wants to tease her, Felberta interrupted him. 
Her body was screaming in frustration within just 10 minutes, she didn't know what would happen if she continued to let him do whatever he wanted. Nux smiled, thinking that he couldn't tease her more, although it was fun, he still wanted to jump on Cloud9 together with her, thinking about it, he smirked as he questioned. Are you sure? Because I can definitely feel this part of yours is very stiff. A-A-N-H tilde. Viscount's body jolted when Nux boldly grabbed her little sister. Trust me, I know a very good exercise to heal this stiffness tilde. Chapter 21 Many thanks. Trust me, I know a very good exercise to heal this stiffness tilde. Nux then rubbed his tent on her butt as he whispered seductively. Would you like to try it? I'll give you one chance, Felberta replied with a red face. She was just too weak against him. Even though she had decided to end this, with just some of his whispers and teasings, she gave in again. She could not decipher how she ended up like this. I promise it would be worth it. Nux smiled before he lowered his pants and his large dick appeared. He then used his dick to slap the Viscount's firm ass a few times before he removed her already wet panties and started rubbing his dick on her entry. And Tilda, this was already too much for Felberta to handle and a moan leaked out of her mouth. Onish Tilda, completely drenching his rod with her love juice, he slammed it right into her insides without any warning, making her moan in pleasure. After all that teasing she has been through for the past 10 minutes, her body, especially her pussy was already very sensitive to touch. Thus, as soon as he rammed his cock into her, Viscount's whole body quivered in ecstasy and her arms felt weak. Since she was still on her fours with her arm weakening like that, she was about to fall but soon, a pair of hands gently grabbed her waist, supporting her from behind. I believe that my method is already working, is it not? Lady fell, she then heard a soft voice from behind, the voice so hypnotic that she couldn't help but go with the flow and she nodded in reply. Nobody could have guessed that the Viscount who was so noble and elegant half an hour ago, would be down on all her fours, being drilled by an unknown man, inside the office she works in. On the other hand, Nux could also feel her insides trying to engulf and merge with his dick. Feeling the squishy insides squirming around his rod, he closed his eyes and moaned inwardly. Oogfish Tilda, he was sure that he would need a lot of time before he could get used to this lovely sensation. Tisk, who was he kidding? He might not be able to get used to this his entire life. He then bent down as he placed his head on her back, her sweet perfuming assaulted his nostril, inhaling deeply, he gazed at her purple bra before unplugging it with his teeth, freeing her two giant and firm mountains. He moved his hands from her thin waist to her firm breasts, kneading them with love and care. He could feel her body twitching every time he rubs the area close to her nipples. Her nipples are sensitive, he smiled before he gently flicked her nipples and as if confirming his thoughts, her canal narrowed, clenching his dick harder and the Viscount moaned out loud, Ro. Anish Tilda, the pleasure Nux felt soared instantly, he moved his head towards her right shoulder, and he gently kissed her nape before he whispered. I'll start moving now, under the intense suction from her womb, he pulled back his dick to the entry slowly, before ramming it back in one thrust. Anish Tilda, his hands played with her breasts, sometimes flicking her hanging nipples, while he kissed her nape in her cheek gently, and drilled his huge dick inside her roughly. Anish Tilda, his different approaches to different parts of her body sent countless jolts of pleasure into the Viscount's body, weakening it even further. She had long given herself to the pleasure, her whole body was handed to Nux for him to do with it as he sees fit. He, of course, didn't disappoint, supporting her body with his arms, he continued drilling his dick into her, making her moan in delight as she asked for more. On tilde on tilde on tilde. Don't stop on tilde continue what on tilde you are on tilde doing on tilde. On tilde this feels so good. It was already afternoon, the sun was shining strongly, their bodies were already drenched with sweat. The sweat mixed with perfume and love juices forming a weird but pleasant scent that spread in the whole room. If someone walked into this room right now and sees them, he would instantly compare them with two dogs mating together on the street without caring about anything else. Viscount Felberta's eyes were opened but there were no eyeballs there, her tongue was hanging outside, she couldn't even speak properly but she was still moaning and asking for more in her whole language. She looked like she had already lost her senses. Nux wasn't any better either, he kept drilling his huge rod that was drenched with her love juice into her repeatedly, his one hand was holding and squeezing her bare breast, while the other was pinching the other breast's nipple. His handsome face rested on her upper back as it kisses her back and napes sometimes before he bites his lips, seemingly trying to prevent himself from moaning but was unable to notice that the grunts he released were even worse than her moans. I on tilde I am coming tilde on tilde. Unable to take the pleasure anymore, Felberta's pussy contracted before a huge amount of love juices come out of her pussy. Spraying all of it on Nux's already drenched dick. As if finally achieving his goal, Nux's eyes opened wide before he finally let go as he grunted. Oogfish tilde fell, I am coming as wheel tilde. From Lady Fell, to Fell, but nobody noticed. Fresh milk burst out from his, his body quivering in the pleasure of releasing his jizz after holding it for such a long time. Weird energy entered his body but he was already too tired and fell beside Felberta. 
The two stayed like this for quite some time, their bodies twitching in pleasure as they relished the aftertaste of their orgasms without any words. Ha, I believe ha, this cured all your stiffness, did it not? Lady fell, ha, the stiffness ha, has spread all over my body ha, but ha, but since it felt so good ha, I'll forgive you ha. Many thanks. Chapter 22 My Beautiful Fell Tilda After the intense session and a few minutes of rest afterwards, Nux and Felberta finally woke up and came to their senses. Felberta quickly wore her clothes and rushed towards the bathroom while Nux called the maid and told her to clean everything. However, this time the maid wasn't as expressionless as before, as she had a tinge of red that she desperately tried to hide but couldn't do it. Nux smiled when he saw her acting like that, this little missy was peeping on them when she heard Viscount Felberta moaning like that. Nux noticed it but didn't say anything because this was essential for the next mission the system gave him. Mission. Fuck Skyla Hale. Description. Well, fuck Skyla Hale. Reward. 10 system points. Warning. If the mission fails, the ability craving touch will be disabled. Time limit. 15 days. Ellipsis. Mission. Fuck Lane Whiny. Description. Well, fuck Lane Whiny. Reward. 10 system points. Warning. If the mission fails, the ability craving touch will be disabled. Time limit. 15 days. Ellipsis. He received these two missions when he saw these two maids in the morning. Not that he needed the system to give him any mission since they were already his targets when he discovered their cultivation level. He did not know what the system points were, but he shrugged, thinking there was no harm in getting extra rewards for something you were already going to do. Skyla quickly left in embarrassment after she cleaned the office, Nux also went to the other bathroom, cleaned up and returned before Felberta. Felberta then returned, the two had a quick lunch before Joyab entered. Ellipsis. Joyab who just entered the office smelled the strange scent before he glanced at Viscount and then looked at Nux. Felberta blushed a little, while Nux completely ignored his gaze. Shaking his head, Joyab forced himself to focus on the work. Ellipsis. After the work was over, Viscount Felberta walked towards her room while Nux followed her from behind, suddenly Felberta questioned without stopping her walk. Did you learn anything today? I did, I learned that your nipples are the most sensitive part of your body second only to your pussy. Also, I noticed that slowly pulling back my cock before ramming it deep into your pussy in one go excites you the most. Felberta paused as she turned around glaring at Nux with a completely red face. No matter how much you glare, your face won't look scary if you are blushing like that. You will only look cuter and cuter. Nux complimented. He knew the risk he was taking when he was talking about things like these, but as he had thought before, the risk-reward ratio is favorable for him. You, you are really rude. You talk as if you dislike it, Ro. I do dislike it. You are not very convincing when you are blushing so hard, my beautiful fell Tilda. Nux replied with a smile. What did you call me? Suddenly, Felberta's gaze narrowed and all the redness that was on her face disappeared. My beautiful fell, you can't call me that. I have an image, a servant can't call me as my friends do or it will affect my authority, she corrected in a serious tone. Nux quickly bowed as he replied in a formal tone, it was too presumptuous and daring of me to call you like that, Viscount Felberta. I apologize for my mistake and swear that it will not be repeated in the future. He did not even call her, Lady Fell, any more and directly addressed her as other servant does. Seeing him acting like that, Felberta frowned and felt some sort of weird sensation in her heart. It was as if she lost something she shouldn't have. You don't have to bow and act all formal like that. Without raising his head, Nux replied, Viscount Felberta, I believe that as a servant I was indeed going a little too far with the way I addressed and talked to you. So I decided to change myself and talk to you like this so that I can become a better servant and someone who doesn't affect your image. I said don't bow your head. As you say, Viscount Felberta. He raised his head and looked at her with a serious face. No signs of previous playfulness could be seen on his handsome face, there was just a submissive look that said, I will do whatever you tell me to. Felberta's heart ached when she saw his face but it was still better than when he was bowing. She believed that she should take it step by step. Good, now stop acting formal. Viscount Felberta, forgive me for being ignorant, but I cannot seem to understand how should I act as a servant without being formal. Ugh, just act like how you previously did. Felberta yelled in frustration, I apologize but I cannot do that, Viscount Felberta. I am just a mere servant, it will affect your image if I act like that. You don't have to worry about that. Image is just a stupid concept, we don't have to restrict ourselves just so we could impress people we don't even know. She quickly contradicted herself without a single change in her expression and even made it sound enlightening. Nobles really are thick-skinned. But this will still affect your authority, Viscount Felberta. Ha, huh, how can that be? I am still me, Viscount Felberta. If someone has a problem with the way I handle things, they can come and talk to me. Felberta declared proudly, Hey, as expected of my beautiful fell, I knew you couldn't bear to see me like this Tilda, Nux's serious expression crumbled in an instant as he smiled playfully. 
You, you were acting. Huh, of course, I was. What do you take me for? How can I change my character so quickly? Why you, HMPH? Speechless, Felberta snorted and turned around. Oh come on, don't be angry. How about this, you cheer up and I'll kiss you. Felberta continued walking, treating him like air. On the lips, Nux continued. Suddenly, she stopped and replied. Combine it with another night session and we will talk. Chapter 23 So forget I said that. For the next five days, Nux spent most of his time with Fel. They started the morning with a beautiful bath session, at the lunch break, they have office sex, and at the night, they have bedroom sex. As for his mission with the maids, Nux decided to postpone it for now as he focused on Felberta. Why, it was because of craving touch. No, he did not want to increase its effect, it was quite the opposite. He wanted her body to get used to him, with that, her body would be able to adapt to the craving of the craving touch, he did not want her to just start masturbating like crazy when he was not around. She was a refined and elegant lady, not a horny slut. No, that did not mean the craving will end. If left unattended, it will be back with the effect two times stronger than normal, rendering her unable to do anything. Of course, Nux would let that happen no matter what. This was not the only reason, the other one being that he wanted to increase his stats through his hard work, even if it was just a little increase. He knew that once he had sex with the maids, he would jump levels at a tremendous pace, making it a little harder for him to gain some stat points. Of course, that did not mean that having sex with Felberta had no benefits, he got even closer to her and also, he leveled up to level 3. He also gained a few stat points from the exercise he did. He also noticed that the exercise became too simple for his current body so he increased the intensity. From, 100 push-ups, 100 sit-ups, 100 squats, 10 kilometers run, to, 300 push-ups, 300 sit-ups, 300 squats, 30 kilometers run, no, his hair did not fall off, that information was wrong. A shocker right, even Nux was shocked, of course, this doesn't mean that he completely ignored the two maids. He teased them whenever he had a chance to, making them comfortable in his presence. This will make it easier for him to complete the mission when he starts it. The failure of this mission would cost him the best ability he has, Nux wouldn't dare to take it lightly. Although he was confident that he can complete the mission within five days, it does not mean that he will only start when there are only five days left. That would be just plain stupid. Accidents can happen, it would be laughable if he somehow failed this easy mission due to his overconfidence. Name, Nux Leander, Age, 18, Mana Cultivation, Mortal, Body Cultivation, Mortal, Closing Square Bracket, Race, Human, Talent, Low, LVL, 3, Row, HP, 141 140ths, STR, 11, AGL, 18, VIT, 14, STM, 15, Int, 11, Def, 10, Blank Points, 6, Ability, Craving Touch, Eye of Discerning, Harem Members, Felberta Alve, Ellipsis, after he did his last push-up, his stats appeared in front of him. Nodding in satisfaction, he turned around and saw Felberta standing there accompanied by her two maids. He smiled as he walked towards them before Felberta sighed. I can't believe you improved so quickly and you haven't even started cultivating the technique I gave you. Look, I can notice that you have a talent for cultivation, you can achieve heights unachievable by others. Don't waste it, I can even release you from your duty as my butler, just don't end up like me. There was a tinge of regret when she said her last sentence. Nux smiled gently as he patted her head to comfort her. Don't worry, I won't slack off but I have a different plan in my mind. Although I will need you to release me as your butler. Why why, oh come on now, don't make that face. I will make sure I come when it's a lunch break, I can't miss the chance to taste you, now can I? Nux chuckled as he fondled her ass. Why what are you talking about? She then glanced at her maids before she blushed, they are still here. Ha, it's not like they don't know what we do. The two of them peek at us all the time. Heck, you can even ask them what's your favorite position and they will tell you in a jiffy. Hearing him, the two maids blushed. As they looked down, avoiding the Viscount's shocked gaze. What, you two peek at us? Felberta questioned in shame and anger. She couldn't believe that her two maids would do something like that. Now now, you can't blame them, it is your fault for moaning so loudly, you can't blame them for taking a peek or two. Felberta glared at Nux as she snorted, if you weren't that good at sex, I would have killed you for being so annoying. Ha 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 tilde all right calm down, anger doesn't suit your beautiful face. Come, let's go to the bathroom, I'll help you relax. Skyla, Lane, prepare the water. I'll give you another chance to peek at us and see your Viscount moaning cutely. Felberta blushed in shame but before she could retort, Nux picked her up and walked towards the bathroom. Before going, he did not forget to glance at the two maids and wink at them. Why, just for fun, the maids also smiled seeing him act like that. 
Although at first, they were wary of him as he got close to Viscount Felberta abnormally quick but now that they have seen him for a long time, they lowered their guards. Since they were sure that he wasn't going to hurt Viscount Felberta. Why? Because he already had many chances to do so and get away successfully. Also, they lowered the bars for him to get in their good books because he was a little too handsome, but they would never admit it openly. So forget I said that. Chapter 24 Why not confirm it yourself? After a warm and cozy bathroom session, Nux and Felberta walked out of the bathroom with a smile on their faces. However soon, Felberta's smile disappeared when she realized that she had to go without Nux today. Oh come on, don't make that face my lovely Viscount, I promise you that I will come when it's lunch break. Don't you trust me, you promise, you really think I'll let go of the chance of spending time with such a beautiful woman like you. I am sure that no man is willing to do that, if there is, then he is gay. Okay, then remember, if you don't come on time, I will declare you a gay. Quote ellipsis quote, Nux used his right to remain silent. Ha 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 tilde, Felberta laughed as she walked towards her office. Seeing her walking figure as her ass jiggled right and left, Nux shook his head, he still couldn't believe that he actually managed to have sex with a beauty like that, and she's a Viscount to boot. Ellipsis. On the other side, in the bathroom, Skyla was washing Viscount Felberta's clothes when her eyes fell on Felberta's panty, she blushed before she picked them up, she looked around sneakily before she placed it on her nose and inhaled deeply. She then blushed even more as she muttered, Boo, her panty is wet yet again. Then Felberta's ahigo face when she was being fucked by Nux appeared in her mind and she blushed again. Ah, this is so indecent, but from the looks on her face, sex feels really good, I wonder if it's true. Hum, of course, it is true, suddenly she heard a familiar voice behind her and she panicked. She quickly turned around and saw a 1.75 meters tall man with a devilishly handsome face standing behind her. He had a teasing smile on his face as he questioned. Little Skyla, what are you doing with Viscount Felberta's panty I wonder? And nothing, and how dare you call me little Skyla, I am older than you. It should be I who should be calling you little Nux. Skyla retorted as she did a wasteful attempt to hide the panty behind her back. Skyla was a beautiful fair-skinned woman. She was 1.68 meters tall, with short auburn hair, big green-colored eyes, a cute small nose, and pouty red lips. Her breasts weren't really big but they weren't small either. They were what they call, they would perfectly fit in my hands type. She had a perky bottom and although she might appear serious, if one gets to know her, she was a clumsy type. Although she wasn't as beautiful as Felberta, she was wearing a classic French-made costume so that increased her charm to another level. You can call me whatever you like, but first tell me, what were you doing with Fel's panty? Nux replied as he walked towards her. Wow what panty are you talking about? I don't know anything. Nux chuckled as he held her chin before lifting her face and bringing his face dangerously close to hers. Then what are you hiding from me? He whispered seductively, his lips really really close to hers. Skyla felt her heart beating quickly, although she was 25 years old, she has never interacted with any man before, let alone someone as charming as Nux. Seeing him standing so close to her, holding her chin like that, how can her maiden heart not beat uncontrollably? However, she quickly came back to her senses as she cried inwardly, Ro! This man is too dangerous, he almost fooled me. I mustn't let him see the panty. Nux's other hand moved towards her back but before he could get the panty, she shifted her arms a little. Of course, Nux didn't care, his target wasn't the panty, to begin with. He then grabbed her perky bottom and suddenly, Skyla's whole body twitched as she perked up and she moved back. Hum, what happened to her? Nux thought inwardly before he glanced at her red face and smiled knowingly. It might be easier than I expected. He didn't expect to learn about her weak points so randomly. He slowly walked toward her, the smile on his face didn't disappear as he questioned. Come on, tell me what you are hiding, I promise I won't tell anyone. You promise? Don't you trust me? Do I look like someone who betrays others' trust? Skyla slowly glanced at his handsome face and suddenly she felt guilty that she doubted someone Sahan air innocent looking person like him. She then slowly moved her hands from her back as she showed Fel's purple panty that was in her hand. What were you doing with it? I will not tell you. Skyla rejected firmly. Oh come on Tilda sister Skyla, aren't you like my big sister? Will you really hide this from your younger brother? Nux questioned with a sad look on his face. Skyla wanted to ask when she became his big sister but seeing the sad look on his face, she couldn't bear to. Oh okay, I will tell you, B but you have to promise that you will not tell anybody. Nux's face brightened as he quickly rushed towards Skyla and hugged her tightly. Yay, sister Skyla, I knew you were the best. Skyla was unable to react to his sudden outburst, but since it felt really good, she allowed her, younger brother, to hug her. So, sister Skyla, what were you doing with Viscount Felberta's panty? Skyla blushed when she heard her question, but since she already agreed to tell him, she admitted. I I was wondering if sex felt as good as others say. 
Hmm, just that. Then why were you so confused and shy about it? Why not confirm it yourself? Chapter 25 I believe you are ready for the main course now asterisk. Author. Same warning, proceed with caution skeleton face. Dot dot dot, why not confirm it yourself? Huh, what, if you are so interested in knowing that, then why not confirm it yourself? Nux repeated, his face showing utmost confusion as if he couldn't believe that she hasn't thought of such a simple solution. H how do I do that? Skyla questioned in confusion. By having sex, of course, Nux answered as if it was a matter of fact. S sex, but I don't know who to ha have it with. Skyla muttered shyly, her last part of the sentence barely audible. Huh, don't you have me? You can do it with me. Yo you, B but aren't you doing it with Viscount Felberta? Who says that if I am doing it with Viscount Felberta, I can't do it with anyone else? Isn't that wrong? Oh come on, there are many noble women who share their husband with other women. B but they are nobles, and I am just a servant. Ha, huh, what do you mean, am I not a servant as well? If noble women can share their nobleman partner with other women, then why can't normal women have the same partner who is also a normal man? T that makes sense, that made no sense at all. Nux smiled brightly as he replied, Regite, we are both servants, so there is nothing wrong with having sex together. B but I don't know anything about SS sex. Don't worry, I know all about it. After all, it is the only thing I am good at tilde. Nux whispered into her ears seductively before he grabbed Fel's panty, and put it aside before picking Skyla into his arms as he walked towards the empty bathtub. Huh, it was only after he placed her inside the bathtub did she finally reacted and questioned in panic. Wa well, what are you doing? Hmm, did you not want to try having sex? Ah right now, the earlier the better, isn't it? B but I am not ready yet. You don't have to do anything, just trust your body to me. He then smiled gently, and whispered like a demon enticing a person to form a contract with him. You trust me, don't you? Skyla felt her heart beating faster and faster the closer he got to her. She blushed deeply before she nodded with a soft, um, ro. Nux smiled as he moved forward before planting a soft kiss on her forehead. You can't do it with a tense body like that, let me help you calm you down. Just close your eyes, he instructed. Something inside Skyla told her to do what he said and she closed her eyes. With that, her other senses increased, she could feel Nux's every move even though her eyes were closed. Then Nux's lips moved down before he planted the same, gentle kiss on her eyes before moving towards her small nose. The closer he got to her mouth, the faster her heart started to beat. Her body was trembling in fear and expectation. And soon, she felt a pair of soft lips touching her own. Her body shuddered, she even felt that her heart would burst out in that instant. Their lips parted and a weird sense of loss welled inside her heart. She then felt his soft lips on her chin, then her neck and then it moved down. Skyla waited in anticipation, she wanted to open her eyes but her body didn't listen to her command. Suddenly, she felt the clothes covering her breasts being removed and fresh cool air stroking her bare breasts. Your breasts are beautiful, Skyla. She then heard a gentle voice, hearing him calling her name with such gentleness, Skyla's little heart bloomed in happiness and a smile appeared in her small mouth. She then felt a pair of soft lips touching her right nipple before they sucked the whole thing inside and a wet tongue started licking it. It was as if a jolt of pleasure was released into her body, and her pussy started trembling in excitement as if knowing and fully accepting what was about to come. Then a hand started kneading her other breast, sending another jolt into her body. Her body started to get a hang of this foreign feeling but... Suddenly, another wave of pain and pleasure assaulted her body as she felt her left nipple being pinched by his fingers. Her back straightened up but before she could think more about this weird painful but pleasurable feeling, she felt his hand sliding down her waist through her clothes before it entered her skirt and suddenly it grabbed her bare butt. And Tilda, her body jolted in pleasure, she wanted to move but suddenly, she felt something biting her right nipple that was in Nux's mouth. It was as if he was telling her not to move. Her body followed his command and he continued stroking her butt. His other hand also joined in the fun and they started playing with her ass, molding it into various shapes, the more he played with her, the stronger the pleasure she felt. And Tilda, she felt her pussy trembling in joy as it released her love juices continuously, she couldn't believe that her pussy was already this wet before he even touched it. As if hearing her thoughts, his right hand started moving before it arrived in front of her entrance and directly pushed his middle finger into her. And Tilda, she moaned in pleasure, but before she could get used to it, another finger entered her canal and the two fingers started stroking her inner walls, making her moan in ecstasy and forcing her pussy to keep releasing her juices to welcome them. And Tilda and Tilda and Tilda, she moaned out loud, her body twitching in pleasure. She never felt this good when she did it herself. Her canals tightened and just as she was about to come, she felt his fingers stopping, cool air stroking her wet right nipple, his other hand stopped kneading her butt, and she heard a voice. Since the side dish is over. I believe you are ready for the main course now.